us to Jesus. And from the bottom of your heart, I want you to speak to him. I want you to speak to him. Bless his name from the bottom of your heart. Just bless his name, somebody. Just open your mouth and bless him. saints here shall shout hallelujah. hallelujah you may be seated amen praise the lord hallelujah. Um, number one the song was not written by robin mark the song is bishop gallanting it's a bishop gallanting song and if you are in ephesus learn the song Don't, this is not a song that you should be looking at the board it's a song of personal dedication to god learn it Okay? These are the songs you should spend your time learning. If you, if you listen to the words of the song, there's a, there's a last stanza that speaks of how that to become like him in his death. To become like him in his death. And these are the songs we sang 20 years ago and we're weeping whilst we're singing it in our rooms. When you sing songs like this, America is not your goal. Yeah, marriage is not the reason why you give God attitude. Yeah. God is important. Do you have the last, the last stanza of that, that, the last verse of that song? It's, it's Bishop Gallantin who sang the song, the original. And the last stanza, just project the last stanza, that's all. What does the last stanza say? Yeah. Yeah. You see? Yeah. <coughs> to know the power of your risen life, to know you in your sufferings. And to know, I said, to become like you in our death, my Lord. In your death, my Lord. So with you to live and never die. Yeah. I believe that this is a very powerful song. I, I know heaven likes this song. Yeah, heaven likes such a song. This is a very powerful, apt song for the reality of who we are. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. Say, I'm glad. I'm, glad. I'm born again. I'm born again. Say, I'm glad. I'm glad. I carry the Spirit of Jesus. Of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So I'm sharing with you on something very important. It's, it's termed activation service. And the reason for this activation is because a lot of times especially in the New Testament, it's not the absence of what God has done for us. It is the inability to express the fullness of what is made available to us. That's the problem we have. We don't have a problem of provision. We have a problem of application. Okay? Your healing has been given. Your job has been given. Your children have been given. Everything is available already. But the problem is application. Praise the Lord. And so if you don't understand the principles of application, 
you will realize that you have been in church for a long time, but nothing is changing in regards to your character, your nature, your personality. You are still the same because it's not the word of God that's absent. It is application of what you are hearing. It's application. You know something is wrong. Why do you still do it? So the knowledge is not enough. Of course, it's the beginning of it, but it is not enough. It is not enough. So applying it is what literally we are addressing as activation. Some of you have gifts of healing. You have, you have prophetic anointings. Every time we say seven people here have prophetic anointing, you are the first to break the chair. <laughs> but every day you are second guessing whether you can see. I, I don't get it. Why are you falling down and not showing why you fall down? You're always falling, yeah. All right. It's not bad to fall, don't get me wrong. But there must be application. And the reason why some of you are now tired of falling is because when you, you rise up, there is no application. There's no, there's no, it's like I've, I'm tired of falling. Because I've fallen and nothing is changing in my life. The, the problem is not God, not as the Holy Spirit, it's application. So when we even say that it's an activation service, it means that I'm, I'm just going to show you what is, what is there and how to activate it. Because everybody's... <laughs> Listen, wave your hands to Jesus Christ. Someone said this year, this year. is the year. the year. Now, by the grace of God, before I came, I went to see one of my mentors, Prophet Manasseh, and... He made a statement, I mean, regarding what 2024 is. And, of course, we've shared with you the Hebrew meanings and all that of the year 2024. 2024 is not 2023. 2024, I told you, is the door. When we enter 2025, it is spirit. 2025 is the year of, that's the, so you can say, it's the year of the spirit this year, but no, next year is the proper year. I don't forget what I'm saying. So, they are proper years and they are not <laughs> the shadow years. <laughs> they are extended realities of some years. So, 2024 is actually the year of doors. That means that anything that has closed itself to you in years past. Now, what he said was, he, 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 I'm just saying it in a different way, but he said it this way that he's written a book, the Muad, or the Muadim. Then he says something, he says, this is the year of years. That means if anything has not yet happened in your life, in past, and if anything will not happen next year or two years to come, this is the year it must happen. I, I don't know if you what I'm saying. All right. Don't worry. By the time we are done with the service, this is your response to change. Yeah, you are, you are responding in a certain way like, eh, we know, we know. <laughs> That's how we start January, February, it's the year, it's the year, it's the year. And by August, we are not seeing the year. <laughs> we don't know whether it's a month or a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's like you are not even got to answer because I'm going to explain to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But what I want to bring your mind to is that in the spirit, doors are open. Now, you see, ignorance will make you know if you know a door is open. Doors are open. This year, doors are open. Yeah, doors are open. So, there's what to do to make sure that the doors that are open are taken advantage of. Paul made a statement and said, a great and effective door has been opened unto me, but many are the adversaries. So, an open door does not guarantee access. You can be prevented, though the door is in front of you and it's open. <laughs> Amen? Amen? The door can be open. But you will not go. Paul also said in 2 Corinthians when he says, God opened an opportunity for him to go and preach. But Titus was not with him. He said he, he was restrained in his spirit. So God opened the door, but Paul didn't enter it. He said he wanted to go, but he was there. The, the, there was no opening. The, the, there was an opportunity, but he had to rather go and be with Titus. That's what Paul said. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Find that scripture for me, please. Now, so what Paul was bringing our minds to was that the 
Doors can open, but it does not mean that you will enter it. That's why I say, see, I had no rest in my spirit, but because I found not Titus, my brother, all right? Now, when he, go to, he was talking about the door, he said, a door, it, when it came to a door was opened unto me. But he didn't have, so God can open a door, but you must choose to enter it. Now, the painful part is that perhaps the door was even open when our weather is an open door. Because in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 9, he says, the door can be opened and it's manned by enemies. So sometimes the way to locate doors is the presence. I don't even know what I just said. <laughs> sometimes the way to locate a door in the spirit is that particular location where there's consistent resistance. That means there's a door open. Sometimes an open door is heightened resistance. Because that's what he said. He said, oh, come on, come on. Are you here? Yeah. He didn't say some. He said many are the adversaries. Many are the adversaries. So we might have doors, but we don't even know the door is open. Didn't um, Hagar say it? She was right by water. And I don't think the angel created water. The angel said, look and see. That means the water was there all along, but she could not see. Because some of you, as soon as you see enemy, ah, David saw Goliath as the door to a throne. That's why when he was going to kill Goliath, he made a statement. What will happen to the man? That means there must be a reason why this giant must fall. That means that I understand spiritual protocols to understand that this giant is manning a door of kinship. So David immediately asked Saul, what shall happen to the man that shall finish this giant? He said, this man will get this. He said, aha, because I was suspecting that this giant has not come for fun. It was an opportunity for enthronement. The next time you are struggling to find doors, look for where adversaries have mounted pressure. Look for where there's a lot of pressure of satanic oppression and family pressure. You know, there are, there's a door that's just, it, it's adversaries are attracted to open doors. I told you it's the year of the supernatural. Listen, last week when I, I just wanted to warm up. The things I want to show you this year, eh, catch your onions, you run. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a second phase of, if you ever listen to Jesus in the realm of the spirit, I'm going to do a second phase of that. And I'm going to show you some things that you must take note of. Uh, so, this, these are the seasons you speak in tongues a lot. Yeah, because one of the things you have to lock it in your spirit. You might not understand in service, no problem. But you need to get it. You need, yeah, you have to get it. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Yeah. Because the moment you find the key to this, you are like that. I don't know. There was a movie I watched one time, and the people were fighting, arguing. When they came for the senior warrior, he was just resting. <laughs> he was just chilling somewhere. Yeah, he was, ah, no. I, I think it's Troy. Yeah. They were at battle fighting, but he was sleeping. Achilles, yeah. That's the movie, Troy, but the guy is called Achilles. He was resting. So as soon as he woke up, they woke him and said, what, what are we fighting? He said, oh, they, he said, do they have a champion? He knows that the matter is one man. <laughs> it's not we fighting everybody. Just, let's find just one champion. We'll end the battle. When they got there, the guy, they were giving the... The, the credentials of the man. He said, this is a, that thick, tall giant doing all the thing. Hua, hua, hua. He just ran, cha, 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 cha. One sword in the neck. Woo, finish. The match was ended. He received praise. He told the king, give me my salary. He went to sleep again. What am I trying to tell you? That is a product of something that is so unique that a believer must have. Now, let's read something in the Bible. Hosea chapter 4, the verse number 6. Hosea 4, 6. Let's read together. One, two, go. Now, the moment he says, my people, remember what we said in Hebrews chapter 8. They shall be my people and I shall be to them a God. So, this my people is not just Israel in the state of 
um, covenantal relationship. This is my people well, of Israel in the state where God is their personal God. God is their miracle-working God. God is everything. God has made food available. God has made power available. But these people are still perishing. He didn't say, notice, when God is angry with Israel, he doesn't call them my people. He calls them this people. Oh, are you here? That means my people indicates that these people are on good terms with God. They are following the commands of God. They are obeying everything God is saying. Because the problem with a lot of us is, as Christians, I'm obeying the scriptures. Prophet, I'm praying. Prophet, I'm fasting. But why is it not working? He says, you are his people, but you are perishing irrespective of obeying every instruction because of something. Knowledge. So when Paul noticed that this has been a crisis in the state of provision, you see, this is not a problem when you don't have it. When you don't have the miracles, you don't have the testimony, you are still fighting into inheritance. But when you enter inheritance, your greatest problem is the absence of right knowledge. So Paul now says in Ephesians chapter 1, you know, the verse number 17, that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, colon, that the eyes, that means he's telling you how the spirit of revelation and wisdom operates. Colon means that, let me explain how the spirit of wisdom and revelation operates. It operates by causing your light, light to flood your imagination, light to flood your thinking, Light to flood your understanding. Satan doesn't have a problem, you being in this service, but only making sure you don't understand anything I'm saying. That's all Satan does. The Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief, I've not given you the title of my message yet, this is my introduction. The thief cometh not, but to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that he may have life and have it more abundantly. So what he's trying to tell you now is this, that Satan's first operation in any person's life, in fact, the believer's life, is to steal. Someone said to steal. Someone said to steal. So when Satan comes into your life, he comes to steal. If he does not succeed in stealing, he can never kill you. So every killing and destruction is a product of a successful theft. Satan succeeded in stealing. That's why he could proceed to killing. Mm. So if you start feeling sickness in your body, start feeling all kinds of things in your life, something has been stolen. Hey. You know, Christians don't like responsibilities. When you say this, they like, what do you mean? You know, for instance, when you give the parable of the good ground, somebody will ask, what? So, so is it the preacher's problem or the ground problem? <laughs> I, I didn't write the Bible. <laughs> but if you listen to the scripture, in the parable of the sower, the sower is the Lord. The seed is the word. And the ground is the people. And so if you listen to the entire story, for the first time it gives a, um, let, me, let me find, a anthropomorphic. Do you understand that word? A human or living attribute to uh, an inanimate thing. He gives a human living atti ad attitude or attribute to a soil. So that the soil now has adjectives. Good soil, bad soil, evil soil. And then when you listen to the definitions of the soil, there were things they were supposed to be that made them good. Hey! hey. Who has read Parable of the Soil before? <laughs> Wave hands to me. Have I read it? I've read it. I've read it. Good. All right. So let's go to Matthew. 13, Matthew 13. All right. I think verse 17, 18, when he started explaining the parable. Now, give, when he started say, this is the parable. Now, 18, go to 18. Go to 18. Okay, here's the parable of the sword. Here you there for the parable. So he has given the parable of the sword. Now, he says what? Now, anyone who heard the word of God, of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one. Now, go back to um, chapter. Chapter no, 13, verse 6, there about, verse 6, 7, when he started explaining the good. Go back to 5. See what he's saying, verse 5. Some fell in stony places, 4. Go back to 4. I want to show you something. He said, He sowed the seed, and the seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came to divide. 
Then in verse 18, he explains who the fowl is. He's called the wicked one. So the parable where you saw birds coming to eat the seed was actually Luke 8 calls it the devil. That's the first action of the soil and the seed. The bird or the devil comes to swoop down. The second action is stony grounds. Third action is life issues, crisis situations. So you can see it all listed there clearly. The wicked one is what the Bible is calling the fowl of the air. So every time the word of God comes, Satan comes to steal it. He comes to steal it. And I'm going to get to, you to, sh to show you how it looks like. He comes to steal it. Sometimes he's even stealing it now. Number one, he makes you deceive that you can remember everything I'm saying. It's theft. I'm serious. So you realize that week after week, you are hearing so much things, but you don't remember. You don't retain anything. Nothing stays inside you. <laughs> Satan can allow you to marry. Outside the word of God, divorce is waiting. Yeah. Satan can let you get a visa and go to America. Outside the word of God, you will soon be deported. Yeah, you, you, it will be like magic. You will be shocked. By the time you realize you are in the plane coming back. I'm like, how come? What happened? <laughs> No, the word has been stolen. He cannot kill without stealing the word. He cannot kill without stealing the word. So if there's anything you want to be prompt about, I will tell you how your life will go. If I ever enter your house and you have enough books of messages you've written, not listened, written, I can tell that Satan didn't steal the word. If I cannot track since you became born again, how many books you have that you filled with preaching? <coughs> he has stolen a lot. He has stolen a lot. Listen, the word of God is not an academic exercise. Don't deceive yourself. That's why the word of God is the last place you use photographic memory to capture. It's a lie. The things we are speaking to you is spirit and life. That means the best you can do to capture anything is what addresses a problem you are facing. Even that one, without writing, you will paraphrase your solution. That the man of God says something, it was so true. I, then when they ask you to repeat what he said, it's a paraphrase. And do you know what paraphrasing does? It, it, it dilutes the potency. Yeah, because he paraphrased. <laughs> Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. I told you this year, get a notebook. Get a diary. All right. You do that at lectures. Why didn't you use a photographic memory to write the exam? Why were you asking for notebooks? Tell you get notes. You get handouts. No matter how shocked you are. If you don't read the handout that you listen to in lectures, you will not be able to answer. Hey. And I'm preaching your phone is on vibration. Satan is stealing the word. Because you are listening. Zzz, zzz. You see, and everything. Have you ever noticed you went to listen to the message again, realize that, oh my God, when did he say this? Was I not in the same room? Something took your attention. Sometimes it's so funny that you can't even look at my face while you are walking in Kotobabi. You understand? <laughs> like your mind is in Kotobabi. So everything I'm saying, you went to Kotobabi and came back with Uber <laughs> in the spirit. By the time you came back, it was just a few seconds. But I'll see a lot of things. And you go and listen to the table and say, ah, what happened? I didn't hear this. Why? Uh -huh. That's how Satan steals the word. Make sure you register for School of the Word. I will show you how to prepare to make maximum use of the, the messages you hear. If you see me, it's not be, You see, someone goes like, prophet, you have a photographic memory. Are you able to remember what this person preached here? It's not so. If, if it meant much to me, if it brought me a solution in a state I was in, I will remember the day I encountered it. Yeah, I will remember. I can tell you what you were, what you were preaching. Not once, so, not twice, many. Because every time I meet those people who God has sent as destiny helpers, I can remember everything they said. Because every time I met them, it was right in the time I had to meet them. Right in the time. Amen. Amen. Are, you, are you here at all? Yeah. Are you getting the message? Yeah. All right. All right, hallelujah. So, 
What it means is that the first thing Satan comes to steal the word of God. So all you are struggling with is a problem of understanding. You just don't understand. You see, the church is fighting first fruit. Tight. You said somebody sent me a text, and I was speaking to my, my father and the Lord, and he said to me, that people don't even know tight and first fruit are different things. <laughs> Some people think tight and first fruit is the same. It's not true. <laughs> Someone said, hey, <laughs> you are here. <laughs> yeah, go and listen to the messages I spoke. They are different things. Tight is one-tenth. First fruit is hundred. It's the whole, not some. Whole. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you see this man, I'm a fighter. If you see this man, I'm a first fruiter. I'm an alms giver. I do kingdom investment. I do every kind of giving. Yes. And that's the only way I can explain how God will ever send money your way. Let me give you advice today. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody who says tight is bad, first foot is bad, ask them and sit down. Charlie, how much do you earn every month? How much do you have in the bank now? Give me your financial statistics so that I can trust whether that nonsense you are saying, that tight and first foot is not correct. Give me your financial credentials for, for me to catch it. Now, the people also preaching that it's a sin, it's a lie. It's a, they used to tight. They used to give first fruits, and they have amassed, amassed wealth. I'm here to meet somebody who has never tight, who has never first fruit, who can tell me the truth. Because you see, even if they come and tell me that I'm, I'm an atheist, well, Satan prospers his own. You can't be in the kingdom and be prospering by your own standard. It doesn't work like that. God has a standard. So what am I trying to say? We will argue about this first fruit tight, and you also be thinking, hey, they're right, oh. Hey, they're right, oh. Because here we stand. We don't have understanding. We do not. Tithe, tithe is the law. It's not true. The Bible said, bring all the tithes. That's what the law says. Bring all the tithes. That means they were already aware of what tithe looks like. It's like saying in Exodus 20, remember the Sabbath. It means the Sabbath already existed. So the law brought the law of Sabbath. Jesus became the Lord of the Sabbath. So the, the Lord of the Sabbath is higher than the law of Sabbath. Praise the Lord. So if you take your time and check, to, uh, go ahead and listen to that message. I, I thought it, I think you can make it available. No, wait. Make it available. All right. I know you are confused about what I said. I'll give you further instructions. Make it available. But I explained something to everybody. Almost all the giving practices were done before Ten Commandments came. All of them. Free will offering. Seed. Sacrifice. Noah. I mean, you can mention all of them. I don't know why we are getting all of these things from First fruit is the tree. But Abel gave firstling of all his flock. And flock means sheep, goat, donkey, every other livestock. That means that any first, any mother that gave birth to first, he will capture the creature. That means the day Abel was giving firstling, it was not one. Check the Bible in Genesis chapter 4. He gave the firstlings. Come on, go there, go there, go there. Look at that. He didn't say firstling. So why would you think Abel was carrying one animal? Firstlings, plural, of all his flock. So when the sheep gives birth, if there are ten sheep who are here to give birth, all the ten, one, 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 before any other child follows, he's giving ten firstlings. Join school of wealth. You understand something? That's why we argue on the surface. It's all in the Bible, clearly. So if you're even complaining about one, he gave firstlings. That means he was monitoring all the newly to be mothers and tracking all the children. <laughs> but you see, the story of Abel is one lamb on his neck. It's no, that's firstling. Firstlings. It was more than one. And this is somebody who hold without Holy Ghost. And they were not arguing. You have Holy Ghost. It's not God. Hey, hey, bro. Number two. One day, Ken Hagen said something that blessed my heart. He said, and I learned from it. He said, somebody brought him an offering. And when you look at the offering and the person who brought it, he was so depressed down. He said, ah, why this person doesn't have, why are they giving? And he said, what the Lord said to him was, that's the only way they will break forth. If you use human sympathy to operate kingdom principles, you will be stuck wherever you are. 
Yes. Somebody has bought me. There's one of my sons is here. He used to bring me five CD. Those times, guys, sometimes I give him money. Yeah. I give him I say, So why are you giving me your money? I give him money. He'll bring it all as first fruit. That daddy, first fruit. I say, Ah, so what will you eat? I gave you the money you are bringing back to me. He says, That is first fruit. And I saw him. He would tight on 10 CD, tight on 20 CD. Then by prophetic word, he got a job. <laughs> now he's married. And the kind of testimonies he's got, many, many, many. But they started from somewhere. Imagine I said, oh, you don't have, don't give. I've sabotaged your future. I've made you dependent forever. What's your name? Read the word, though. You'll be fine. Stay with the scripture. You'll be fine. This is our life. And I'll get into a lot of things this year. And I'm, I'm sure I'll explain a whole, I'll get into what Akranche means, direction, um, those kind of things, like it's working, but all those things, i explain it so that you get, you get what is going on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. So Satan comes to steal the word. He comes to steal the word. And this is how Satan operates. The moment he gets the word out of the picture, he's finished you. The moment Satan can empty you from the word of God, he's finished you. He's finished you. Do you know even as a human being, naturally you pray more than you want to read? Even if you don't know God and you are an atheist. When you were in the world, did you feel like reading the Bible or you felt like praying? Do you feel like coming to teaching service or you wanted to come to prophetic prayer meeting? So naturally you are designed to want to pray more than read. Because Satan knows if you read, even your prayer is different. You know, let me, let me share something I learned. Very, I made emphasis was brought to it and it was so powerful. Even our prayer meetings cannot go beyond the quality of people in the meeting. The type of people you have in the prayer meeting determines the force of God that shows up there. I'm telling you. The Bible said there were certain teachers and prophets. And as this minister to God, the Holy Ghost spoke. Do you know another time in Acts chapter 4, something happened? Apostles had met. Apostles. And when they met, they prayed three lines. Father, behold their threat. Begin to wreck mighty miracles by the hand of thy holy child Jesus. In the finishing of this three line sentence prayer, God gave them first miracle. There was an earthquake. They didn't do poya, poya, poya. No. In just three sentences, the place they prayed in was shaking. That means there's a realm. When certain category of men decide to hold hands and pray, the speed of answer. Because you see, an apostle or a prophet and a teacher has too much information to misbehave in prayer. So when the prophets and teachers were ministering to God, they knew what they were doing. So their answers were swift. I'm telling you something. Even the kind of prayer meetings we have, when the prophets are absent, we will pray long. Even the prophets being present activates a certain atmosphere. Listen, this one you can fight with me or not. This is a, this is a, this is a statement of experience. I too have the Holy Ghost. I've seen people without teachers, and I've seen people without true prophets in their prayer meetings. And you can laugh at the time, but you can see the things they are praying about, they are not going to get an answer now. I'm telling you. But when a prophet is sensitive, as we are praying, boya, boya, immediately you lift his hand and say, no, it's not, that you didn't get what is, he, he can sense that we are wasting energy. Stop the prayer. Let's pick it up again. It's not the right way. Answers change like that. Don't worry, I'm seeing a lot of things. The one that is yours, take it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. All right. So today I want to specifically speak on something so important. And the teaching I want to share with you is connected to what the year is. I said to you on the 7th of January that it is the year 5,784 in the Hebrew calendar. And the number 80 in the Hebrew gematria is actually for mouth. La bouche, la mouth. So it means that if 4 is daleth, which is door, and 80 is pair, which is mouth, that means doors are going to open this year by how you talk. Listen to this. 
It means what you are saying is either closing your doors or opening it. That also means that, like I said, the adversaries will multiply at the junction of your mouth. Because if that is what will open the doors, then they'll also gang up to make sure you are not saying the right things. So this is the year some of you will fight some emotional stress. You don't even know where it's coming from. Because Satan wants to manipulate your mouth. Kebo, shale, raboch, kiba. Oh, if you only knew what I'm taking you to. You understand that? The coolness, there's a meaning. Uber roll coat this year. Me, I'm a roll. Amen. Are you understanding? So if it is the year of the mouth, something is going to happen. Yet in the oppression of the mouth, actually when you read Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4, it is a summary of what the supernatural is. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4, he says, and God bearing them witness. That means the supernatural, the year of the supernatural is called the witness of God. God will witness his word. God will witness his promise. God will witness his declaration. Don't joke with this month, the month of supernatural acceleration. Ezekiel chapter 12, the verse number 22 to 24 is actually your scripture. God is coming to turn a proverb around that the vision and the prophecies have delayed. But he says, it will no more be a proverb in your midst. Somebody didn't say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The so the witness of God is actually the supernatural. And the expression of it is signs, wonders, and diverse miracles and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. So if you want to summarize what the supernatural is, it's science. Some say science. science. It's wonders. Some say wonders. Wonder. Some say diverse miracles. Wonder. Some say gifts of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. So these are things we'll be, we'll be sharing with you all through the year so you can understand the summary of it, how it looks like. Now, having said this, why is the mouth important? Why is the mouth necessary for the supernatural life? Why is the mouth necessary for the supernatural life? Why is the mouth necessary for the supernatural life? Why? 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 Why the mouth? Father, I speak over Ghana. We sabotage every sabotager. Any person trying to sabotage this nation in this coming elections, Father, may they meet you. Jesus name. Mm. <laughs> I saw a, vo a very hot tussle. Yeah. I, saw, I saw online fight. I saw in-person fight. I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. I saw four vigilante groups from both parties who were fighting. Dangerous. Yeah. Market this year, you see spy information. What I mean is uh, stories of people you don't even expect in different governments. They'll be just be throwing people's issues out there. They have released spies all around to, to damage people online. Six March, make sure you are here. Six March, we are praying. Okay? Yeah, you can tell me it in Bible case here. <laughs> so this match we are live here. Hallelujah. Uh, I know you are not in GSS, so you are not going to match. <laughs> Please come here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So on the sixth of March, ten a.m. live, we are praying. We are coming to pray for Ghana. Uh, the future belongs to the intercessor, Mary Serolo said. So anyone who intercedes for a thing has a future in that thing. You see, you are not praying for your marriage, so you don't have a future in it. Yeah. The future belongs to the intercessor. So whatever you are interceding for, you have a share in it. You have a share in it. That's, it's a simple principle. <laughs> pray for Israel. Pray for Ghana. Pray for your marriage. Pray for your pastor. Pray for the ministry. Pray for your family. Then you have a share in it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So it's so important for you to understand this. That this year is quite different and unique. And like I told you on, on, earlier on on the 7th that it's the year of the supernatural. 
Doorways are open in the spirit. Satan is going to do a lot of business in this year. Number four, the number four is appointments. <laughs> yes, divine appointments. Of course, like I said to you, in Genesis 1.14, the Bible spoke about how time was created. And creates, I told you that time was designed by God to have meeting place with man. God decided to create time so that he can pour what he has finished in eternity into those moments. So, so, so this year of the number four of open doors, it's appointment. The, the door that is open is an appointment of destiny. It's an appointment of greatness. It's an appointment of establishment. It's an appointment of abundance. It's an appointment. It's a, it's a divine appointment. And so you have to poise yourself so that you don't miss your appointment. A lot of us have been missing appointments. Even in the natural, you miss appointments. <laughs> Hallelujah. But don't miss spiritual appointments at all. That's why we said that this year is the year Jesus will, will meet a lot of us in encounters. It's appointments. You have visions of the Lord. And those things are appointments. The appointment into, listen, when God meets you, it's, it's powerful. Blessed are those who went for retreat. If I were you this year, I'll find a lot of times to go on retreat. Appointments. It was the year of appointments. What better appointment than you go and meet the Lord? The Lord said, my daughter, this was going to happen in three months. This was, I mean, this is powerful. Do you need any prophet to tell you that again? No. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to share with you something so important as we move on in this journey. Now, if all these things are appointments that God has created, why is the mouth important? Now, in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible said that um, there was a when Eve had finished, you know, being joined to Adam, the Bible said in Genesis 3, 1, and Genesis 3, 1, and the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field, which the Lord had made, and he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Now, the problem is this word, eat. Someone say eat. Yes. Now, in eating, people have always thought of the biological transmission of carbohydrate, protein, minerals, and what? Fatty oils and whatever it is through your esophagus by the principle and the operation of peristalsis and the, the digestive distance of tylen and, uh, and all those uh, sucrose and sucrose and all those kind of, what do you think? is digesting things, digestion. That, that is it. We are eating to be full. No. If you study scripture well, eating was not designed to get energy. Eating was not designed for sustenance. The fall created that operation. What God designed eating for was to fellowship life. Eating was designed for fellowship. That's why even through antiquities and the medieval times, you will notice that it is at food people come together. So there's a table that is created and it is at food that people come together. So the family sits together. Everybody is down. Welcome, Manuel. Good to see you. So it's at it's a table that everybody kind of sits down. People sit around the table. And all that goes on. It's, it's fellowship. It's a table. It's an eating fellowship happens. So that in the New Jerusalem, the Bible spoke about how that we will sit with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and we shall eat together. And the Bible says, Isaiah 25, that, you know, we shall eat wines on the lees full of marrow, you know, a feast of fat things. And Jesus also said, when he was breaking the communion, he says that, as I eat with you now, you will not eat it until, I will eat it with you until the next age. So there was also going to be eating in kingdom era. Hallelujah. Not only so, the Bible also said in Revelations chapter 21, 22, 22 actually, that there was a tree of life which bore all manner of fruits every month. So there was an eating that will happen in glory. So, but in that eating, we are not eating to be full. We are not eating to have energy because if you read what the scripture says, it bears 12 manner of fruits 
every month. So you cannot eat until monthly. He didn't say every day. <laughs> every month. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. It happened is a fruit fast. <laughs> Praise God. Number two, you will notice that in the Garden of Eden, God did not create man to even be carnivore. Man was to eat the herbs. Every creature was herbal. Yes. Isaiah chapter 11. The Bible says, Isaiah 11, 6 and 7, the Bible says that, and the lion will eat grass. Right? Yeah, that's it. He said, the cow, all right, all right, all right. Uh -huh. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. That means even the lion was designed to be eating grass. <laughs> the four was serious. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the craving for meat was a product of the four. What I mean, no, what I mean is that the biological translation of your body requires proteins of that sort. It requires lipids and amino acids in that category for your system to work well. No, there are some things people suffer from and it's lack of protein. It's, we are not eating enough meat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. What am I trying to tell you? Listen, the, the realm of the spirit is so wide. And I'm, I'm praying that God will give me the grace so you can understand how, how witches, wizards, dwarves, gnomes, perch in that same realm. It's a patching. The Bible says all power belongs to God. That means whatever the witch is using is a is stolen power. But they are misappropriating it. That is why it's witchcraft to use power on another. Uh, another message, another message. It's another message. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. 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 All right. So what I'm trying to bring your mind to is this, that. Now, this eating has, I mean, an abundant reality. Jesus said now in Luke chapter 4, Matthew 4, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That means man's sustenance is first God's word before it was anything you eat biologically. Then secondly, in the eating, you were to fellowship with God. Mmm. I don't think I'll preach this one this year, but one day I'll preach about the first Adam and the second Adam. No, the first Adam had the glory. He didn't have to eat much. Let, little grass, he's fine. Oh, yeah. 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 Amen. And the reason for even that eating is as a result of the type of body we have. So see what the devil said to Eve. In Genesis 3, he says that, as, verse 6, he says, as soon as the devil said what he said, he says, then the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. That means that these are three categories that actually intimate the function of eating. That means I am eating to acquire wisdom. They were not eating to be full. They were eating for a certain state of existence. Oh, are you here? Are you sure? Are you, are you sure? But the most important thing I want your mind to come to is, is that he said, a tree to be desired to make one wise. But first importantly, he said, that was pleasant to the eyes. Your eating is your living. Your, how you eat, what you eat is your life. No wonder they said you are what you eat. Isn't that true? You are what you eat. 
Now, I'm going to show you something further. So, now, this now brought damnation to humanity. Number one, it was pleasant to their eyes. That means that the food was a generative answer to desire. It means anything you eat is a picture of your desires. Mm. Mm. Then Job 23, this Job 23 says, I've esteemed thy word above my necessary food. Then he says, you know, when he spoke about how that uh, um, in Psalm 19, he said, it is supposed to be desired more than the honey, even the honeycomb. That means if I eat the word, it's, it's indication. Your lack of Bible reading is a picture of the absent desire for God. Don't, don't excuse me. You are not busy. In your business, you read three love novels in one month. Yeah. You have an online news letter you constantly barrage and enjoy. Your newspaper every morning must not leave your table without your coffee. And you say you don't have time for the Bible. It's a proof of your desire. Whatever you are feeding on is a picture of your desire. So anytime you are feeding on a lot of Instagram, a lot of YouTube, a lot of, it means your desire has left to something. What you are feeding on, what you are, it says pleasant to your eyes. So all those things you are watching, all those things you are watching, all those things you are watching is where your desire, your, your desire is. Yes, it's a desire. How do I mean? We have seven books in the, in the library, isn't it? You go to the library, you have ten books over there. And as soon as you get there, why do you touch the book on prosperity? Many books. Why are you looking for? Relationships. And you are deceiving yourself and say, I want to be a relationship expert. Don't lie. You want to marry. Be honest. Your desire. Why is it that since the day you married, you have not bought a relationship book again? Your desire. I've, I've acquired the guy. I don't have any desire to advance the sweetness of our, our marriage. So I don't have to buy any book. I mean, you say, I mean, and you know the funny thing? When there is crisis, then I go and say, how to repair broken communication. <laughs> so literally... Your feeding is a picture of your desire. Now listen to the thing very well. So you can understand that when we enter glory, the reason why we eat the tree of life is that we desire the eternal life. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a party to show what we desire. Rebo <laughs> Washira. Mm. And when she ate it, she gave it to the husband. Experience. Yeah, they ate it and they got experience. It's an experience. It means whatever you are eating opens the door of its experience. That means if I drink this water, H2O, if it has amine, it has uh, potassium in it, it has magnesium in it, it has carbonate in it, whatever is in this, as soon as it enters my throat, I've experienced its content. That means if I open the Bible also and I eat the scriptures, all scripture is God breathed. Do you know when I open the Bible, I'm experiencing God by that action. So stop asking, how do I experience God? Open your Bible. And your pastor came to Jesus and said, I've been trying to hear from you, but you're not talking to me. Jesus said, I've been talking since. And he says, how have you been talking? He says, I speak every day in my Bible. Then he said, Lord, what do you mean? I've been waiting for you to audible voice. He said, I also have a recorded voice. It's, it's already recorded. So anytime you say God is not talking to me, get to your Bible. Open it. God is talking. He talks every day through the scriptures. Every day through the scriptures. Hmm. <laughs> now, when God now needed to redeem man, he realized that it's only food he had to redeem. Notice, with water, he struck rock. The water didn't come from the sky. But with eating, he had to bring it directly from heaven. Because if you keep eating what is on the earth, you will not have any heavenly experience. So in Psalm 78, 
He says, your fathers, they ate manna, angels food in the wilderness. They did it. So they ate the food of angels. What makes angels angels? God is, that's what manna was. The food of angels was what man was eating. That means on earth, the way angels are able to live, the way angels don't suffer lack, the way angels are not constrict, uh, they're constricted to environment. For 40 years, a desert was like a vacation island. It's in Psalm 78. Please find it for me. 24. Okay. Okay. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And not only so. Now, why is the mouth so important for the supernatural? Remember that the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, it says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abides forever. Say to yourself right now, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I recognize, I am made, made by the word of God. So your composition is the word of God. You are made up of words. Listen, you sitting here, your constituents, your constitution is word. So to be happy or to be sad is words. Oh, who has ever received a good news report? Congratulations, you won. Congratulations, your visa has been approved. Who has received it before? Lift your hands. Who has, who, okay, who has ever received a congratulatory? Somebody said yes to your proposal. <laughs> Lift your hands. I know, perhaps this is not the case. It was once upon a time, but have you received any like that? Good. Are we together? Yeah. Why is it that when you saw the congratulations, you didn't just sit on your bum in the room and say, huh, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> you didn't talk to anybody about Why? Why couldn't you do that? It's enough good news, isn't it? You should be happy, right? But why did you feel the edge to tell someone? It's as if without saying it, the completion of your happiness is not achieved. Words. You are made by words. You are made by words. So you're like, I can't wait to tell you. And when you have no one to tell, you put it on your status. <laughs> the whole world. When God finally answers you. Because since nobody wants to celebrate, let me call all of you to ask me questions. Then they'll send you a test. What's up? What are we celebrating? <laughs> Yeah, so that I can tell you something. Words. You are made by words. What that means is that, now I'll get into more of that. What, uh, what that means is that, listen, when God was creating the world, he used his mouth. He used his words to create existence. So it means to exist properly, is a proper use according to God's usage of your words. If you use words like God uses words, you will live well. Any way of living that is not consistent with how God intended you to live is a product of something you said that was not consistent with how God talks. In Romans chapter 3, from verse number 10, he starts speaking about the state of humanity. For it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Then verse 11, there is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. So you see, understanding is a pivotal reality. Listen, when you kneel down today, pray to God, Lord, give me understanding. You see this prayer thing you are struggling, it's lack of understanding. If you have understanding, <laughs> Two days ago, I was listening to a story of one powerful prophet in London who said his son, who has his name as a junior, was born with Down syndrome. Yeah. He said his son was born with Down syndrome, but he went on a 90-day fast to reverse it. Otaje. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Is this how my life is supposed to be? Why is God? You are not praying. You are not reversing anything, and you are not complaining. 
Somebody is using 90 days fast to reverse Down syndrome. Some of us would have accepted it. And rather blame God, I've saved you all my life. Why will you give me a child like this? Somebody went to, now the boy is prophesying. He's thinking well. He's prophesying. He doesn't have any Down syndrome. But he was once diagnosed with Down syndrome. <laughs> this year, you will not be a lazy Christian again. That your physical mouth lazy, you will not bring it to the spirit. Some of you are spiritually mouth lazy. You don't like using your mouth to do anything. He says, they are all gone out of the way. Why did they go out of the way? They have become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So there is something he's de declaring that has happened. The reason why no one does good, the reason why everybody has gone out of the way is verse 13. See what he says. Their mouth is an open sepulcher. And their tongues have used, have, they have used for deceit. They are, the poison of apps is under their lips. Next. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Then he said, because of that, next, next, verse 15. He said, their feet is swift to shed blood. Notice the things he said that has caused man to be unprofitable, caused man to suffer, caused man to go to the things. He mentions one active instrument. In fact, if you check the Bible, it doesn't even mention hands. It doesn't mention your chest <laughs> or your shoulder. Two major instruments. Four of them, your mouth. And one, your leg. That means if this thing does not speak well, this one will also not go well. So when he was speaking of the grand indictment of what made man fall, he said, it is the mouth. The way man used his mouth is the reason why man ended up falling. He ate what he shouldn't have eaten. Spoke what he shouldn't have said. He said, number one, go back to verse, verse 13. Their mouth is an open sepulchre. Number two, the tongues have uttered deceit and their tongue has, you know, the, the, there's a poison of a, a, a viper, the poison of a cobra on their lips. That's what we call poison ivy. Yeah, poison ivy here, poison was on their lips. Then verse 14 says, and their throat, their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. So when he gave us the dietary complementation of our falling state, that is the communion, eating the bread and drinking the wine, he now showed us that I've done the biological state of reversing the death process in your body. But there's something that I have to use a spiritual thing to clarify. Acts chapter 2, the verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered one accord in one place and there suddenly, suddenly, verse 2, there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind and it filled the house where they were sitting next to it. He says, and there appeared upon them cloven tongues as of fire and it sat upon each of them. Now notice this, the cloven tongues was fire that was upon their head but it now descended into verse 4. Verse 4 says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and so there were tongues on their head before tongues on their mouth. But the tongues, Bible says, was declared as cloven. The word cloven is actually in Leviticus chapter 11, which describes clean animals. That means the tongues we speak is God's cleansing agent for the cursing and the bitterness and the openness of our mouth as a sepulcher, a cemetery. The things our mouth have declared for death. When you sue katoska, palababa, you are bringing back to life. You are bringing, you are repairing. You are causing your tongue to learn how to be instituted in speaking the right things. That's what tongues is for. You see, so when you have this understanding, anytime something is going bad, you are tempted to speak evil. But you do kaborias kapalaba. Then the next thing you say, as well. Ha, as well. If you don't do that, you will speak deaf. Your mouth is already an open sepulchre. Open sepulchre. That's why sepulchre means cemetery. It means op and the word open means that it is ready for more bodies. But when the sepulchre is closed, it is used. Somebody is in it. That's why it's closed. The day Jesus resurrected, the sepulchre was open. That means it's empty for another body. So your mouth being an open sepulchre means you are bodying your destiny. You are bodying your blessings. You are, you, are, you are filling that cemetery with many things in your life. The next time they give you a medical report, stand in your room and say, 
break forth. Clean your tongue. Clean your tongue before you make any statement. So that you don't make the wrong statements. Hallelujah. And that's what, when the Lord was restoring the church, the first part of their body he touched was their tongue. He brought tongues to replace the mouth that took them into the fall. Listen to me. God can tell you everything. If you don't activate it with your mouth, there will be a problem. There will be a problem. There will be a big problem in your life. Do you know what the Bible says in the book of James? It says, show me a man who is perfect. Listen, the perfection of the believer is not in his body, nor his conduct. It is in his mouth. Christian perfection is on your tongue. I don't, I don't know if you get what I said. Someone said, oh, you have to be perfect. You have to, no, it's in your tongue. It's in your tongue. If you want to be perfect, he says, see the man that is perfect in all his way. Is he that has bridled, bridled his tongue. You have bridled your tongue. There is a way you use your mouth. You don't talk anyhow. You don't say everything. You don't say some things. Your mouth, your mouth, it produces life. Produces life. So all your spiritual activations is just on your, it's a lip away. It's a, it's a, what did he say in Romans 10? He says, the word of faith which we even preach to you is 9D and it's in your mouth. It's not far. It's in your, that means for faith to come alive, you must speak it. That's what it means. He said the word of faith eh, is 9D in thy heart, even in thy mouth. So for faith to come alive, it's a speaking away. But you're quiet. And you're rather asking, where is my, you are not talking. <laughs> my, 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 my. Woo! This year you fly. I'm telling you, fly. Koba Isharuba Sanda. You fly. Because God is not a man to lie, neither is he a man to change his mind. What he has said, he will make good. How come he started it and you are like, is he going to finish it? Ah, God is not like you. If he stopped, it was, had nothing to do with God. Your batteries are dead. <laughs> Your toy car was coming and it stopped on the way. Does that mean the machine is not supposed to work? It's designed to work. But some of these batteries low. You have to increase power. Yes, that's what you do. <laughs> I'll, teach, I'll teach something in church. I'll not teach us. I'll probably go deeper into school of faith. But I'll teach something in church. On the law of faith with regards to the supernatural. Yes, I'll teach it. I'll explain to you. When we say increase your faith, that's what it means. That's what it means. That's what it means. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Are you here? So what is this activation all about? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, the verse number 13, it says now, everyone that is unskillful in the word of righteousness, he is a babe. Now what's the word of righteousness? That word, word there. Now let me even show you. Remember what he, we quoted this afternoon. Acts 20, the verse 32. Acts 20, 32. Yes, when Zuri was sharing that. Acts 20, 32, what does he say? He says, well, huh? TPT, good. He says now, uh -huh, let's read, let's read, let's read, good. Pause, go to King James. Let's read it. Hold it. Now you saw a word there, right? The Greek is logos, right? Okay, now let's go to um, Hebrews chapter 5, the verse 13, and see what TPT said. He should have just used the same thing, message of righteousness, but he changed it. What did he say? Why didn't you use message of righteousness? The same translator, but he changed the words. Because, oh, school of the word, I'll explain to you something called the Textus Receptus. The reason for various versions. It's called the Textus Receptus. And you know how to trust a translation based on that document. Are you here? Mm -hmm. So, Please register. We need you to register so we can know that. So I'm sure the question they're asking you is the time that's good for your class. So you can know if it's a morning class or evening class, what to be suitable for everybody. Um, and it's strictly by registration. If you miss three classes, <laughs> You have to redo it. 
if I want you to miss three classes, the next time you are trying to enter, you are not entering. Yes, no. So you have to be serious to enter. Because the thing now is about five sessions. If you are missing three, what, what is your purpose here? Yes. Amen. <laughs> Text to receptus. <laughs> Amen. Because most of the things I've taught you, I've taught you in church. The word, how to use the word, how to study the word. So what I'm going to do there is quite different. I'm going to show you something called the Resh, the Midrash, the Talmud. How the interpretation styles, how to use allegorical interpretation, you know, all those things. How to use interpretations to get the information you're looking for. Amen. Amen. Now, this word is revelation. Some other translations still use this word. But actually, what it means is speaking. So every spiritual infant who lives on milk is not yet pierced by the speaking of righteousness. Why? First Corinthians 13, the verse 9. First Corinthians 13, 9. Quickly, quickly. For I know in part, in the prophecy in part, next verse, verse 10, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Verse 11 is the most important part of what you see. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, but I, as, and I taught as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childishness. Now the word childish or the word child here is the word nepios. And the word nepios is from two Greek words, ne, which means no, pios means speak. So when I was not speaking, as a not speaking, I understood as one who was not speaking and taught as one who is not speaking. That means that your not speaking is the foundation for your immaturity. It's the reason why a lot of you are born again, you've been in church for 10 years, but you, you don't know how to speak. And that's why you are still a babe. You are not growing. It's not a message you are not hearing. It's not your, it's the lack of your speaking. Woo! So righteousness does not come alive if you don't declare it. It's a declaration. I'm the righteousness of God. Karabasho. I'm the righteousness of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible calls Hebrews chapter 3 verse 11. Jesus Christ, the apostle of our confession. Hebrews 3 verse 1, sorry. Hebrews 3 verse 1. Hebrews 3 1 says, Jesus Christ is the apostle of our profession. ASV, 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 the word profession is confession. So the Christian faith is called the confession. You cannot be a Christian without confessing. How do you get born again? With your heart you believed? With your mouth, confession was made to salvation. So, and the word salvation is the word soteria. Soteria is health, wealth, blessing, wholeness, abundance, glory, power, everything. That means you cannot access power in Christ if you are silent. So when you sing that song, I'm walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor, I know who I am. So when you're walking, I'm walking in power. God, I at us. Yeah. A lot of you have been faced with opportunities why well, you should have used your faith. And I'll come to show you something very powerful about faith. But you didn't. You, you shut down the operation of faith by what you said. You enter a bank, they say they can't allow you. Say it's a lie. No, yeah, recently I was, well, my, my son and my mother were traveling somewhere and they both said they need a visa to go. And the visa is electronic. So when we were trying to get the visa, mine was okay, but hers was not appearing. And we want to be able to apply everything. So, ah, why is she not appearing? Satan said, ah, you are going alone. No? <laughs> you will leave your wife in Ghana. Otherwise, to be a good husband, then we are all not going. Then I've wasted tickets. I've wasted all the bookings. I've paid the Lord. That. So, now, as soon as it was happening, I said, ah, why is she not? She said, I can't. I don't know. I don't know. So, I saw she was very calm. And her calmness informed me that stop being nonsense. Don't misbehave here. So, I, I never asked her, did you really do it? <laughs> so, you know, yes, husbands are like that. Want to make sure she, we are sure they did it because. But I, I, I was, I was just, so I was just, why, why is this happening? So I had to call the office, call the counter. They were all waiting for us. Where is the visa? Then all of a sudden, I just said, the Holy Ghost said, boy, boy, why are you talking like that? Just thank me. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this delay. Thank you, Jesus. Because I had had a vision that that was going to happen. But I thought we were rather late to the airport. Because in the vision, I saw we were rushing, and we got there, and they were saying the counter is closed. So I've achieved all of that. <laughs> and these people are trying to stop us. <laughs> I said, ah, I said, thank you, Jesus. And she also said, Lord, thank you. Thank you, our visa has appeared. Can you imagine, we were calling all these people to send the visa now. 
Only for us to check. And we've checked through. Only for us to check and, and, and to check. And the visa came a week before the day. Meanwhile, too, it was not in the box. We've gone to spam. We've gone to, it was not there. So in thanking Jesus, we just went to refresh. And you know in refresh, it's as if they've now sent it. It didn't come as today. It came as a week to the day we we're traveling. Just because you thank God and you spoke. Some of you will see something like that and go like, hey, hey, it's like I'm going back home. Hey, the witches are stopping me from traveling. Hey, they have changed my name. Hey, who I said it, I said it. Every day one travel, they will fight me. Hey, hey, you see what you have done? You are unskillful in the speaking of righteousness. What is the speaking of righteousness? I deserve what Jesus deserves. Jesus cannot be embarrassed. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I cannot be embarrassed. That, it, that, it, that is what makes us babes in life. That's what makes us have experiences of children. Because we have not learned how to speak our rightness in God. No man to speak. Many years ago, I wanted to change my national service to a new place. I had worked in microfinance, and the stress was too much because I worked Monday to Saturday, Monday to Fridays, 8 to 6 p.m. That's working hours. Sat national service. Saturday is 8 to 4. I said, so when will I wash? It means it's only Sunday. It means you have to wash on Sunday. Funny, funny stuff. I said, this thing can continue. Because I know why I came there. I chose microfinance because it's a bank. They will pay me extra. <laughs> Do you know they paid me on the dot? On the dot. 132.78 on the dot. No extra allowance. And I said, boys, you, we are going beyond normal. And you know, I was being legalistic. Uh, you know, the national service um, rules and regulations says when we work beyond overtime, we must get overtime. Eh? They didn't mind me. They didn't care. I work on Saturday. No allowance. One th and I saw my friends who go to work at nine and close at three. <laughs> and they're getting the same money. I said, no, man. That's the day I learned money is time. And time is money. Because I learned and said, if I go to work Monday to Friday, and I work only six hours, I have another 18 hours to do other things. I cannot spend my life close to 12 hours a day. Because if you are closing at, if you are going to work, you have to report by 8. It means you have to leave home latest by 5.45. If you stay at Awoshi. <laughs> Traffic. Many times I had to get down at STC, and walk to my office at Circle. Hey! Sometimes you get to work, you are sweating. All your perfume is gone. Because those days, you don't even have perfume. All you have is sure or the, the fire. Do you know those says spray? It's called fire. That's what you spray. It's not strong at all. Every day you are like, and I, I mean, I like smelling good, but ah, yeah. So I wonder, I used to wax. Why is my boss smelling nice? I don't smell. Then the Lord said to me, This is in air conditioning. <laughs> he said, That was sweat you brought to office. <laughs> By the time you get to office, you know, you are, you are having this, everywhere is wet. <laughs> And you'll be like a fugitive. You stand by the, you stand by the stairs when your bus passes. Because if you cross him and they check the time, you are late. So you have to spy. When they pass, then you quickly enter. Quickly. Then you intentionally to do like you are weaving in the washroom. Chur. Ah, you are here. Yes, sir. <laughs> then you climb the office. That's how I was. And I said, Lord, I can't do this. When I decided that I'll do it, do you know what happened? I decided that this Saturday, I cannot do it for 12 months. I'll lose my spirituality. That means that if I'm going to work Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., I tried one all night once. My God, I slept. Oh, I was disgraceful on the chair. <laughs> because you closed at 6 p.m., went for all night, you have to be at office by 8 a.m. There's no sleeping time. The whole Saturday, I was just dozing like a gazelle. Do you understand? Anyhow, just dozing anyhow, by heart, by heart. But the longer short of the story was that I said, I have to find a plan. So I went to look for an SAT school and told them that I have received a school and I'm going to study for my scholarship to go to America. So they have to release me. Because I realized from asking people that the only reason they let you close work early or not come on Saturday is when you go to school. And I was not doing master's or PhD at the time. So all I have to do is find an SAT something, something and go and do Think big. <laughs> so I found this school of SAT. And I told them, Saturdays I can't come. My God. 
And they said, okay, we'll see what we'll do about it. Hey! Then whilst I was, they, went, they now made me a remittance officer. That means I can't close at six. If you work in the microfinance, remittance officer means that by the time the system's close at 5.30, you must reconcile every transaction from overseas. So now I have to take the receipt and confirm. Hey! I get home at 8 o'clock. Once in my life, I went back to work the next day without bathing. <laughs> yeah, that's how serious it was. Yeah. I lie in bed, bang. <laughs> and I woke up at 6.20. I said, Jesus! Then I did a mask in my head. If I bath. <laughs> oh! May the Lord make you a boss. <laughs> may the Lord give you your own job. <laughs> Some of you, your laziness because you've not worked for anybody before. When you work for somebody, you learn ethics. Yeah. So when I see somebody who has not bathed, the hair looks like he didn't comb it. I know he didn't bath. I said, you, you bath. He said, I no bath. Bro. I've experienced it before. Went to work without bath. That's why you learn how we do ablution. <laughs> Whether this in the quickly. <laughs> That's why if you see a guy with two minutes, he's doing his nose. He's, <laughs> he's trying to make sure he's maintaining the. <laughs> tell your neighbor, you see, some guys are angry. Tell them, hey, did you bath? Why have you squeezed your face? And why are you serious, sir? You are too serious. Did you bath? It's like you are too serious. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So what happened now was, as soon as I got to this place, I said, no, Lord, I got to change. Because if I don't change this, if we are finishing national service in August, my spirit will be down. Every job I've taken, I took it, number one, in consideration with God, and number two, if it was God giving it to me, then it will not affect my work with him. Sometimes it's not even you thinking. Sometimes it's pride and fear. The job won't affect you. It's just that, listen, when you, you have to work. Don't be lazy. Work. The word work in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 is there. Put it up there. The word work is the same word to dress. Uh-huh. He said, and the Lord took Adam, uh-huh, put him in the garden of Eden. To, the word is dress. The word is abad or aved. Abad, abad or aved. And this word means to worship, to serve, to work, and to war. Every job God puts you in is your service, it's your warfare, it's your worship. Take it seriously. You got to work. Yeah? yeah? Don't sleep in your bed and say, <laughs> so, no, 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 no. You got to work. There's a season you'll be out of a job. And that season you must know what to do. And when God builds capacity, he will bring you a job. Because God will not always take care of you with ravens. I'm going to say something about faith that way. Will disturb you at the same time to help you because some of you you are getting wrong in that area. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For instance, if I don't preach and I stop church for three months, four months, the people who bless my life will be few. It's because I'm standing hours. That's why somebody says, "Oh, can I give something to the prophet because of this work?" Yeah. That's why if I don't also preach well and I'm giving you damaged food, <laughs> the offering will go to someone else. What do you think? Because whoever is nourishing you is the one you bless. So if I don't study and know the word, pray, and build capacity to heal people and all those things, I, can't, I will not be a person that deserves any kind of seed. Do you understand? Do you understand? So if you want to do ministry, it's still work. You got to pray. Yeah. They've not called you four calls and everybody's mother is in the hospital at the same time. <laughs> and you're like, hey, Zubaraba, ba, 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 ba. Yeah. Got to pray. Work. It's still work. Amen. Are you here? So I began to pray to God. I said, God, this thing must change. So the Lord, the, then I said, I just went. They said, if you've done the national service for four months, because it's January, they're about getting to February. They said, if you've done the job more than five months, they can't change it at national service. I said, hmm, we are going. I told my mom. I said, ma, do you know what I said? I went to the, the, the scripture of Esther. If I perish, I perish. <laughs> that means I said to her, I said, if they don't allow me to quit this job, then I'll do national service next year. I don't have a problem. I'll do it again. Like I had that. I'm... No. If Pharaoh will steal my time, he should bribe me with cash. 
So many of my sons and daughters, they, when they tell me that they have a job, I ask them, how am I? I'm not asking about the pay so I collect money. I'm just asking so that, is it worth the time? This stress, you will not sleep early. You know, I'll ask you, how much are they paying you? If you say, oh, okay, okay, you can enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah, because they are paying you for the stress you are going through. But you are come to do the bread of sorrow. You wake up in the morning, labor, 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 come back home, and all they give you is thousand Ghana. At the end of the month, your faith can do better. Amen. So what happened now was I'm sitting in this office and all of a sudden this man comes to sit and says, young man, we can't do anything about it. And I said, sir, we have to change. He said, we can't do it. I said, we have to change it. He said, there's nothing we can do. I said, eh, okay. I just sat there quietly. Then fortunately he received the call. As soon as he received the call. Now this is what I want to show you today as we go on. When you don't prep your spirit well, you don't even know doors that are open. The door opened, but you, your mind was somewhere. As soon as he got the call, my mind came to myself that this is a door. Do you know what I did? I said, Kobar I spoke under breath. Father, let the angels that are present turn his mind. Turn his mind. Turn his mind. Kadura kata. And he was not here, but I was speaking to him. When he was down the call, do you know what he just said? Okay, young man, go to any institution, any company you want, bring it. Can you imagine? He did After saying he can't change it, I have to wait till next year. After the call, the angel of the Lord turned his mind. He said, go and look. I should go and look for where I want to work. It's not that they'll really repost me. Men, I'm I should find the company I want to work in and bring it. They'll accept it. That was how I switched from that place to Kolebu. That's all. And for God to show that it was him. When I got to Kolebu, to, the person I was going to work with, the professor, he typed my letter. His secretary had gone home. He sat down and typed my letter on the spot. Why? When I got to Kolebutu, I was going to histopathology because I've worked with them before. But as I was going, the Lord said, this is not what I'm asking you to go. Don't, don't let me start a miracle and you end it yourself. That's the problem with a lot of you. God starts the miracle and you take over and say, hey, <laughs> since the brother has said hi, let me take over, Lord. So every morning you are coming, hmm, hey, 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 hey. the brother said hi, you were not wearing lipstick, continue. Do you understand what I meant? I didn't say look ugly. I said continue. Continue in the sense that let the Holy Ghost keep leading you. But God led you. You got the chance. You want to take over. That's why you also destroy your own miracle. So as soon as I got there, I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Where should I go? He said, go to this one. Microbiology. So immediately I turned. And I went to Prof. And I saw him. I said, Prof, hello, sir. Thank you. He said, oh, we are closing. 5.30. We are closing. I said, sir, sorry. I just came from national service. This is what they are saying. He said, so. Then he went to. He said, my secretary is also gone. He went to put on the computer himself type the letter. Because the Lord heard when I gave command. Remember what he said in Isaiah? Command ye me concerning the works of my hand. You are not commanding God to die. You are not commanding God to come and do something new. You are commanding him concerning what he has already said is yours. So some of you got opportunities. You went to this place, the people said, we can't do anything about it. And as soon as you were done, you took the letter and letter, I said, hmm. Why is it every day I've confessed? Miracle oil. Miracle this. I've anointed my forehead. I've anointed this document. I even put it on the altar. They still said no to me. Ah, there was a lady who went to uh, um, US, uh, what do you call it, interview. And when she got there, the people said, we can't accept you. And she's a daughter of Adeboye. He said, we can't pick you. We have denied your visa. She said she got out. And she was going down there and said, ah, Papa Adeboye cannot say I got it. And I didn't get it. Can you imagine? She didn't even write institutional review. She went back to the counter and said, Sir, my father <laughs> said I got the visa. You must give it to me. You know? And God is so amazing. And God is so hilarious. God, the person looked at him and said, I'm shocked. You are that bold. He said, yeah. They said I must get it. And he just shook and said, I, I like your boldness. Pam. <laughs> you are there. There's, there's, these people don't have 18 eyes. Do they have 18 eyes? The same head, the same eyes, the same face. The difference was that somebody refused to accept no. Even when they tell you no, pay, quickly, you go and kneel down. Is this how my life will be? Every day, me. Every day, no. Every day, no. When would they say yes? One yes, pay, I've asked God. You have not given it to me. The kingdom of God suffered violence. There is an element of violence to insist on the possibilities of God in your life. Once God said it is yours. Once God, let me even say it in a very, uh, how do I call it? 
Once God even made a mistake, if he can even make mistakes, to make a prophet tell you that this is possible. <laughs> you just have to kneel down your and say, God, you know, I wouldn't have even prayed about this matter. But you just decided to tell me that I'll get one million dollars. You will not sleep. Oh. <laughs> this one million, you will not sleep. I will pester God. Because he said, there is none that stirred up himself to lay hold on God. That means that to lay hold on what God has promised you, it is not God who will stir you up. It's you who must stir up yourself and say, Kai, if we sit here and die, we must move. That's how you do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you here? Are you sure you understand what I'm saying? You are getting it? Are you sure? Yeah. All right. So quickly, what I want to bring your mind to in a very, I don't know, but I'll try, I'll try. Now, there's something very interesting in physics. You did physics, right? <laughs> you understand physics, right? I'm going to share something on quantum mechanics. Did you do quantum mechanics? Introduction. Okay. Okay. I understand, but I, I want to, who else did physics here? But you did physics, in, you are doing physics now in SHS. Okay, no, SHS, you didn't do, you didn't get into quantum mechanics. But some of the things in quantum mechanics have, pss, some of the things in quantum mechanics have basics in the SHS physics. But I want to share something very interesting with you concerning a certain system called the wave particle. Um, <laughs> Somebody said, what? <laughs> Somebody said I should continue. Now, uh -huh, yes, this is the word, yes. The, the wave particle duality. Now, I want to, it's, a, it's a very interesting theory in, in physics. I want to show you something. Now, I'm using physics because it's a spiritual principle, but um, sometimes you need a science to explain a lot of things. And this duality is a product of science's confusion about the matter, but it's explaining the Bible. It's already in the Bible. Now, why I'm saying what I'm saying is this, that when God was creating things, especially in Genesis chapter 1. The Bible said that in Genesis 1, 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then verse 2 says, the earth was without form and void. Now, of course, if you read this thing, you, you, you think that um, God created formlessness and void, and darkness was upon the face of deep, the spirit of God moved upon the waters, the face of the waters. But that's not what happened. Something happened in between. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 4, the verse number 23, he speaks about what happened. He said, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens and had no light. Next. And I beheld the mountain. So this is the prophet Jeremiah seeing what happened. Now, what it meant was that there was once, go back to 23, there was once form, there was one space, there was once light. But something had happened to the earth that created this distortion. Please are we together? Because yeah. Jeremiah is quoting the same thing that happened in Genesis. Remember, the account of Genesis chapter 1 is a product of a prophet's communication. Moses. So Jeremiah the prophet is also talking about his encounter with the beginning. Hey. <laughs> are, are we together? Yeah. So the two of them are, are actually confirming the fact that the earth became. The Hebrew says tohu va bohu. What that means, the earth became without form. Do you have the YLT? Let me see if YLT um, put it in the Hebrew translation. Okay, I look to the land and low waste and void. Okay, do you have the CJB? The, con, the common, is it? The Jewish Bible. Do you have it? Okay. It was unformed. All right, all right. This is not bringing the, the Amplified Classic. Find, find the, the translation, but let me just keep on my story. Now, so what happened was that God had created the heavens and the earth. God had created perfections, all things, but there was a fight in heaven. And this fight di distorted and deformed the earth. It created a, a chaos on the earth. 
But the Bible says something so interesting. That the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. He was moving over the waters. And the Bible says, God said, let there be light. Verse 3. Let there be light and there was light. Now listen to what I'm going to say very well. Because it's going to connect to Hebrews 11. It's going to connect to Hebrews 11. Now, what he was communicating to us here is this. Notice he did not say, and God created the light. Verse 14. Verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Next verse, 15. Uh -huh. Next, next, next. And God made. So when God said, let there be lights, he made the sun and the moon and the stars. Please, are, are you here? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. You got what I said? But when it came to Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, verse 3, sorry, when God said, let there be light, he didn't make the light. There was light. That means he was not creating light here. He was calling light that was already existent. He was speaking to an existent reality to show up in this non-existent realm. Yay. Yay. The same one in Genesis 1.16. Lights. God made two lights. After he said in verse 14, let there be lights. Let's go to verse 14. The same statement. Let there be light. Let there be lights. But he continues in the next verse, two verses, that he made the lights. But in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, when he said let there be light, he didn't make any light. There was already light. As soon as he said let there be light, or light be, light already was. So he's not talking of what he was creating. It was something that was already existent. Please, are you here? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Good. God spoke, and the existent reality of light came into existence. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, the verse number 1, the Bible says, ah, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, By it, these elders obtained a good report. So that what? Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Do you have the Passion Translation? Let's see what he says. Let's see if Passion Amplified Classic helped us. See what he says. Good. Great. Faith empowers us to see the universe was created by and beautifully co coordinated by the power of God's words. She spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. Notice what he says. Verse King James. Go back to King James. And I'm going to do a two job with one scripture two jobs of one scripture. Number one, when he spoke about the worlds, of course, the Greek is the word aeon. But he was trying to also communicate to us the way God created in Genesis 1. When God was creating Genesis 1, it was not the first creation. Listen to me very well. Now, this is where we marry science and creation. What is happening in Genesis 1 from verse 2 is what is calculated for the period we are measuring. Okay. Genesis 1. <laughs> hey. Genesis 1 verse 4. Genesis 1 verse 4. And God saw the light is good. How God? Fine. Verse 5. The verse 5. And God called the light day, evening, morning. Good. Verse 6. And let that be a feminine in the midst of the waters and let it... Now, notice all of a sudden, he is creating feminine to divide waters. So, why, why didn't he say and God made waters? Because the Bible says in verse 2 that the waters was already. Then notice what he says, verse 3. And God said... No, 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 not verse 3, sorry. The next verse after what we just quoted. Next verse, verse 7. And God made a feminine to divide the waters which were under the feminine from the waters which were above the feminine. And also, next, verse 8. And God called the feminine heaven. 
And there was evening morning, second day. Next. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place. And let the dry land. So God is not creating new earth. It was just covered with water. If you're struggling with that, who remembers that in the Ark of Noah, fishes were not in the boat? This is what actually explains the theological issue of certain strange creatures in the ocean that seem to be from the Jurassic Age. Mm. Okay. Listen, <laughs> what am I trying to say? Because the whale is in the water. The water was used to kill giants. And man, not fish. So the whale was okay. Oh, come on. The whale was okay in the water. So there was no aquarium. When the fishes were coming, when God said, oh, animals come to. Did you see Mr. Shark walking with the wife? Come on, let's go. No, the shark was still in the water. What? The shark was in the water. The tilapia was in the water. The priana was in the water. All those creatures were in the water. They were waiting for water because it's our environment already. Come on. Are you here? So I, I'm not, I'm, today I'm not doing apologetics, but when we get to apologetics, I'll explain the whole thing about carbon-14 dating, the era of carbon-14 dating, and all the confusions about the hell, the seven million years, blah, 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 blah. We'll get into all of that. But there's a state place, if there's anything I want you to get your mind to. What we are calculating the F to be is from the time God was repairing it. Jeremiah chapter 4, the verse number 21, quickly. Jeremiah 421. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? Verse 20, 20, 22. He said, the people is foolish. And okay, he kept speaking. Next, next, go. Then he says, I beheld the earth. Next, next, keep going. Verse 25, verse 25. He said, I beheld and lo, there was no man. And the birds of the heavens had fled. And he's talking about when the earth, you see, verse 23 tells us what Genesis 1, 2 said. But 24, 25, 26 is explaining other things Genesis 1, 2 did not say. That means that when the earth became void and without form, that earth in Genesis 1, 1 had an entity called man. <laughs> oh, my God. This explains the Neanderthal man, the Australopithecus man, all those kind of guys. What you call the cavemen. This explains that category of people. They were men, but they were not in the image of God. Oh my God. This is it's called population genetics. You understand it. All right. Are we together? Yeah. Wave your hands to Jesus Christ and say, yes. yes. All right. So, what am I trying to bring your mind to? God, in Genesis chapter 1, the verse number 3, is creating the earth. And Paul mentions the way that work was done by speaking. That means that everything from that day responds to the sound of words. Scientists did something called the sono technology, the, the sound technology. They put two bottles of water in a room. And you can try it today for 30 days. Put two bottles, bottles of water in your room and cover it good water, bad water. Or you can name it good words, bad words. And every morning when you wake up and put them at separate locations. So every morning he goes to room one, this one has bad words. Foolish, goat, cow, <laughs> triangle, <laughs> octagon, <laughs> octopus. I mean, all kinds of nasty words. Every day for 30 days. Then the good word says, beautiful, nice, amazing, fantastic. After 30 days, the scientists of that sono technology said, when they opened the water, the one that had bad words smelled like the gutter. And the one that had good words smelt like normal water. If I have to taste in it, the one with good words tasted better. 
And uh, no, listen, this is not in quantum physics, eh, you'll be su surprised. Every bad word has a wave. And the wave of bad words are very horrible. The way it's drawn is some nasty wave line. But every good word has a very consistent way that it projects. Listen. And this is where the quantum physics issue comes in. It is called the wave particle duality theory. Now, this theory is because, number one, matter is supposed to be substance, particle. But in Bohr's postulation, or the theory of Bohr, when Bohr did the, the don't worry, if you did humanities or, or home economics, the Lord is with you. Just speak in tongues, the Lord will teach you all I'm saying. Amen. <laughs> No, this is, this is not the history part of the Bible. It's the science part of the Bible. Can I preach? Yeah. All right, it's, the, it's the science part of that. There's nothing I can do about it. That's how I, I can explain it. In Hebrews chapter 11, the verse number 3, he says that the things that we see that are created were created from the things which do not appear. And notice what he said. He said things. That means that he's not saying they don't exist. Once he calls it things, the only issue is that they are not to your visible eyes, but they exist. The moment he says, we're not made of things, it means they are already existent, but they just do not appear to your eyes. So what happened now is this. This boss theory said there was a dissection of the atom. You find a neutron, you find a nucleus, you find a neuron, you find a, sorry, not neurons, neutron, neurons are brain, but neutron, proton, and electron. Now these electrons are particles. And usually, electrons must move in such a way that if they change path, it's by collision, so that they scatter. So there's something called the uh, entropy state of activation. When the, the electron moves and it collides with another electron, bah, it gets energy and begins to move in a certain way in a different direction. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's the basis of diffusion and osmosis, those things. When it's moving like that, all those things. Now, listen to me. <laughs> you don't even understand that God allowed you to go to school so that some of these things you can appreciate him better. And when somebody asks you a question, you're like, ah, ah that's why I learned science. You didn't learn science for fun. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I love this man. Is that what's his name? Uh, no, no. C.S. Sprawl. And there's another man. No, no, no. Is that what for? It's City, City Spro. Then there's another one. Uh, he often argues with uh, Dawkins. Uh, this professor. Lennox. Mr. Lennox is car. Man, when the man is talking, I'm like, that's it, that's it, that's it. And you can just appreciate science better. He's a professor in math mathematics and very amazing minds. When they are talking about God, they even, even the atheists are even confused. Yeah, no, because what you are saying is true. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, what am I trying to say? In this particle electron, it moves like a particle. Yet, the scientist says something very interesting. It has another nature. It also moves like a wave. And waves are refracted or diffracted. For instance, what I'm doing now, the reason you can hear it is because of something called wave. So if there's a a beam, there's something in between me and you. What we used to do soundproof is the operation of waves. So that means I'm just condensing all the waves so it doesn't escape, then it's here. But wave operates as energy, whilst matter operates as particle. It's in one place. You can touch it. You can feel it. Yet he said, when they did this wave-particle duality, the waving in one place can now become like a particle. Then when they move to another place, it's a wave. Light. Do you know light is both particle and wave? That's the, so they don't understand. How can some, because one thing is energy. At the same time too, it can be measured. It can be caught in the corner as a particle. Well, that's, that's the photons. So why is it now having this dual nature? Because they are two different, what do you call it? characteristics or nature, but they are acting as the same. And he said, that's how human beings are. 
So in quantum mechanics, it's believed that man has a wave-particle duality. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Number one, you are walking, and somebody is walking after you 50 meters away, but you can feel somebody's behind you. Yet you are not a prophet. You can just, do you know what's happening? It's a wave. The person is producing wave. But as soon as you turn and look at them, you are not feeling the wave again. The feeling dies. Particle. <laughs> yeah. It's not prophetic science. <laughs> if it's prophetic science, it's not correct science. <laughs> science is science. <laughs> it's not prophetic science. Please go and read, okay? <laughs> It's, it's not because I'm a prophet I know this. I have to read and verify some theories and get up. That's how it is. So in other words, can I tell you this? You think you are manifesting in 2024, but there's an energy and wave that has already gone ahead of you. So sometimes what you are calling the feeling that this year will be good is the operation of the wavelength. But holding that goodness is the particle. When you feel like that's why I said hope is the, faith is the substance. So hope is the energy. And faith is the particle. So what I'm touching. So I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. I have a car. Listen, I'm speaking to things which have not yet appeared. The money for the car. The person for the car. The place the car will be bought. is already being projected in the spirit. There's a science to it. There's a science to it. There is a science to it. There is a science. Don't stop talking. There is a science to it. Don't stop talking. There is a, listen, don't stop talking in your life. That's producing wavelengths. Speak. Speak. There are things that have not appeared that are waiting for your action. It, it is, it's, it's waiting for your sound energy. Listen, speak. Never stop talking. When you wake up in the morning, bah, as soon as you get out from bed, put your leg on the ground. Today I dominate the day. The best comes to me today. Kalabashata. People are favoring me on the left and the right. Listen, what have you done? You have activated the wave particle duality. I've released waves by how you speak. And you handle the particles in the day. You are too quiet. That's why things are not going your way. Oh yeah, that's the truth. You are silent about a lot of things. That's why things are not working the way you want to work. Get into your room. <laughs> I know you are struggling financially. But the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, he said, when the clouds are full of rain, they will empty themselves. Ecclesiastes 11, 11, he said, when the cloud is full of rain, they will empty themselves. Go there. When the cloud is, kai, kai, kai. He said, so in other words, how do I cause the cloud to be full of rain? My words. How did Elijah create rain? First Kings chapter 18. The Bible said, when he climbed the mountain with servant, he said, go and behold. He said, said nothing. What did he do? He didn't stand there looking in the sky. He didn't stand there wondering what will happen. The Bible said he knelt down. Let there be cloud. Let there be cloud. The guy went again. He said, there's no cloud. He did it seven times. Do you know what he was doing? The reason why there was, that it took seven times was because that time there was no water in the earth. God had to reverse the normal way by which rain is formed. He couldn't use natural convection. He had to use another way. That's why the Bible said the cloud was formed on the sea. Because that's the only place condensation could happen. That's the only place God could heat up the sun to bake the waters for vapor to appear as a man's hand. So when you are confessing and it's not happening, it means that you are operating a system that is contrary to how your thing should come. Never stop talking. Kneel down again and release the wavelengths. Let the particles form. Let the particles form. Stop being moody. Stop wasting your time worrying and start speaking your miracle. Speak it into existence. Speak it. You are driving that car. You are marrying that man. You are marrying that woman. You are traveling that travel. You are having those children. You are having those twins. You are building that house. Speak it. The clouds must be full of rain. Don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. I refuse to be sick. I walk in supernatural health. Keep talking it. The clouds are filling up. Because the day is about to rain. Where will be the clouds? Where will be the clouds? 
Don't stop talking. Don't stop talking. Don't stop talking. Don't stop talking. Hey. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. It's like you are going to fight. You are going to fight. <laughs> you are going to fight Goliath. And when you got there, Goliath was holding his shield. And Goliath started insulting you. And God said to you that this giant is yours. But when you got there, the giant was not soft. The giant was not gentle. He was already attacking you before you attacked him. But you look at the giant and say, I, I will kill you today. Then the giant starts running towards you. And the Bible said, Moses and, and David, he also charged towards the giant. Hey. Huh. Listen, God was going to kill Goliath with a stone. So what has running towards each other got to do with this fight? Sometimes God has told you, I've given you the victory. But your problem is running towards you. It's now the problem is heating up. You have to run and face it. You tell him, no, no, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going, no, no. This marriage is working. This relationship is working. This scholarship is happening. I run towards you. They, 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 they are coming you to you go towards them. Madero kopos kabayaba. You wake up in the morning and when you wake up in the morning you feel a sharp pain in your back. And as soon as you go down, you're like, what is this? Say in the name of Jesus. I do not feel you again. Come on, get out. And the more you are speaking, the more you are feeling the pain. But listen, listen. It's just the process. It's just a process. It's just a process. <laughs> so you see, you see your problem. The more you are confessing, the more it's looking stronger. Keep at it. Tell that problem, I will hew you down like a tree. I will cut you and cut you till you finally fall. Every morning you wake up, speak to that pain in your back. Speak to that growth in your nose. Speak to it. It has intelligence. It is called the wave particle duality. You think it's an organ, but it can hear you. Because you see, listen, listen, listen. When the scientists did their experiment, one of the scientists said, it's as if these electrons have intelligence. Hallelujah. Because the, it, he said, if you're not looking at it, it looks like a wave. Like I said to you, it's moving like a wave. But as soon as you turn and you look at the experiment, you can see it standing. You're like, ah. Yet when you measure it, it was moving like a wave till you looked at it. So it's as if when he sees your eyes, it will comport itself. What am I trying to tell you? Sometimes when you speak some things and you tend to look at it, it's not moving. Ah. Yet when you take your eyes, your healing is happening. Yet when you look at it, it will pretend as if it's standing. <laughs> but when you turn your eyes, that's what the Bible said, turn your eyes unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Stop looking at the change you are looking for. And look at him, that will change it. As you look to him, your face will be enlightened. Look to him. Listen, if there is any year I believe, you are not going to get miracles by prophecy. Shoo. God will make you a miracle worker. Hmm. Why will God make you a miracle worker? Because God is a witness. In the year of open doors, God is a witness. And you will write mighty miracles by your hand. Because you have understood that as long as I keep speaking, there is rain coming. 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 Ayakata. You are believing God for a house. You, instead of you declaring a rented one, rather pray this way, I own houses. I know you are looking for rent, but rather pray this way, I own a house. I own a house. I'm a landlord. I'm a landlord. I'm a landlord. I'm a landlord. Ay, 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 ay. Keep speaking. That's how you activate the realm. You are too silent. You are too silent. Speak. 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 Randos Rakoba Sandalama Sanda. Yes, Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. Speak. Somebody lift your voice and speak. Speak over your finances. Speak over your body. Speak over your Christian life. I'm anointed. 
I carry God. The word of God is alive in my spirit. I do not labor in futility. I don't waste my time with evil. I depart from iniquity. I walk in righteousness. For his name's sake, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I am far from evil. I am far from trouble. My mother, my father, my siblings, we are far from trouble. My wife, my children, we are far from trouble. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down, quickly, quickly. Listen, listen, speak. Don't, don't be silent. Speak it. Today I show you how the thing works. As soon as you speak, the wave is working. As soon as you turn to look at it, it's as if it's standing. That's how something can be deceived at the things you're looking at. No one the Bible says, why we look not at things which you can see? But the things we cannot see. Because the things we see, they change. But the things we cannot see, they are eternal. And he said the world was created from things we can, that, that do not appear. But dealing with any kind of situation, use your mouth. It's called stoma. It's the edge of a weapon. Be courageous. Do not be afraid. Stand in front of the mirror and say, I'm not afraid. I refuse to be afraid. Used to be afraid. I walk in righteousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the left, on the right, I'm favored. I'm favored by God. I'm favored. Kai, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but that's how you do it. That's, listen, that's how you do it. You curate your future. Curate it. Many years ago, that's, those are the things we said. Those, I can show you in my diary. Everybody sitting here, God spoke to you about me in 2013. I can show you in my diary of how God was going to progress. When we start church, I, I can show you. You are not where you are by mistake. You are a product of the things you said. I'm above temptation. I cannot fall. It's not pride. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's how I see myself. This year I'm not going to fall. This year I'm not going to fail. This year I will not be broke. This year I will not suffer sickness. That's how to talk. Stop saying that's how we stand. No, 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 no. It's your mouth. It's your mouth. The Bible says, you see what he says? He says in Proverbs 18, verse number 20, he says you will be satisfied. Your belly will be full of the things you said. That means, like I said, your belly will be full. You will get nourishment or denourishment by the things you have been saying. Start speaking life. My marriage is working. My children carry God. That's how you talk. I'm the best to anybody. You speak like that. I'm the best parent. God has put, look, God has put life in my mouth. When I speak to children, they hear. Ah, and it is, you speak it, speak it, speak it. Why are you standing there crying? I'm finished. It can't work. Who told you that? Who told you that? You must not have, listen, listen, listen. God had nothing to do with your failure. You give up. You give up. God had nothing to do with it. If you want to be blessed, you are supposed to be envied. So why are you wasting your time on the component of the blessing? Blessed. To be envied is the man. That's what the Amplified said. Blessed. In, in, in what? Psalm 1. Verse 1. Amplify classic, amplify. He said, blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, enviable is the man. So the happiness, the prosperity has envy with it. And I said to you last week that if God blesses me and you got a problem with that and you start saying that, and eh, since you got a beloved, since you got a husband, since you, you are, hey, right now there you are, there you, eh, that means you're not supposed to roll in my new level. I'm not going to beg you to be here. Because if you are at my level, I got a car before you. It will not make you scared. Because you know you too can get the car. Blessed to be envied. Anyone envying you means they are not supposed to work with you. Period. So sometimes God does that to show you the next level. The people you roll with. Everybody has a problem. Hey, nonsense dear. Nonsense dear is saying. That means they want you to be, don't progress. Don't be happy. Blessed to be envied. 
I was talking to one of my daughters recently. I told her something. I said, some, some of us grew up here having a problem with greatness. So some of us, we grew up in such a way that in becoming great, we hid ourselves. I realized that myself. When they are going for school prefect, I hide. When I'm going for this, I hide. So for a long time, I was treated like an underdog. So when you get something, I just go like, ah, you, how did you get it? Because they have always assumed that you, you don't deserve any good thing. I got school to a certain place and somebody said to my parents that, hey, they never knew I was intelligent like that. <laughs> yes. Because I had gained in a admission to infancy. They said, ah, hey, I didn't know them was. Because you don't talk, you are in your choir, you are in your corner somewhere, so everybody assumes you are, you are a dullard. That tells you how human beings are. Human beings deal with other human beings in the flesh, let me repeat, in the flesh, based on their definitions of you. So anytime you try to come out of what they have defined you, they start having an issue with it. That you are the here and we are the here. Anytime you are trying to cross, hey, why are you coming to our side? Be at your side because you are not supposed to. So when I went to secondary school, I got A's first year. A's of all sorts. Then everybody in the class from Northridge Lyceum, from rich school, from, they were like, ah, who is this guy who is also getting a max? And when they acted like that, I decided to hide my intelligence. I one day God spoke to me, he says, don't apologize for greatness. Don't apologize for blessing. Don't apologize for doing well. Don't apologize for going well. Don't, it's, it's enough. Stop apologizing to your friends for doing well in life. It makes you fail on purpose when you have capacity to succeed. Because you are afraid if you do too well. You are afraid if you marry. You are afraid if you have a happy family. You are afraid if you travel. You are afraid if you have a multi-million dollar business. Your friends will live your life. Then they should leave. Because I cannot become mediocre. Because I'm afraid you are uncomfortable. Somebody will say, hey, since when the prophet sing, I will sing. And we will record. I have a problem with that. If they also give me a word, I'll collect. Don't say, since when did they become a prophet? A, a singer. It's not your business. I will not become mediocre because you are uncomfortable. Some of you have prophetic gifts, but when you pray one, two, your friends go, hey, Charlie, flit. Then they are feeling intimidated by you. Keep prophesying. Become deep in the word. Become prayer thunder. Enlightening. When you carry them to the park, they go like, hey, the guy, they pray. But they might not tell you in your face. They'd rather be teasing you. I don't want to kill Jesus. Every day you are fasting. Every day prayer. Don't mind them. It's intimidation. It's intimidation. Pray fast. Don't, don't become anything because of somebody. Become everything because of the Lord. That's what I'm saying. Become everything what? Because of the Lord. Because of the Lord. I will do well in life. That's my praise to him. I'll become everything he asked me to. That's my prayer. What did he say in Ephesians 2, the verse number 10? He says that he has made us his workmanship. That we may walk in what? Oh my God. That's why he said that we are to do good works which God predestined for us. So we've already been arranged to excel. We've been arranged to do well. So why are you apologizing for what God has prepared for you? I'm not going to apologize. I'm not going to apologize. Stay in Trasaco if you want to. Have a house in Malibu if you want to. Hey! Praise God. Hallelujah. Buy your clothes in Versace if you want to. If it is the coat you can cut, go and cut it. Don't take loan and do it. Oh. I said, if it's a coat you can cut. They say cut your coat according to what? Your size. If it is your size, go and cut it. Cut the Versace suit. Cut it. Of course, you don't work in price, so you don't have to show people. You know, sometimes you just want to flex that, oh, it's a Versace. Bruh, <laughs> we don't care. The important thing is you are the one wearing it, wearing it. You are feeling good. Enjoy it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't buy a Porsche, a Porsche or buy a G-Wagon. And when you are coming to church, you are packing. Show it. Don't come and be a show-off, but pack your car. The way when you were packing your Corolla, you pack, come and pack the Range Rover like that. <laughs> The same way you were packing your, 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 your Camry and Karina. Do you know Karina? 
It's an old car. Corona is called, called Karina. It's an old car. The same way you were parking at your Opel. Opel Cadet. Come and... At the same spot of the Opel Cadet. Come and park the Range Rover. Come and park the G-Wagon. Yes. Don't say, hey, people will say that and now you go and park that. No, don't do that. It's wrong. That's a defeatist thinking. Wrong. Praise God. Amen. Amen. If you have the money to build a beautiful house in your area, build it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Lift your hands to Jesus. Wave it to the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. My, 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 my. My God. My God. But finally, I want to show you something about how words are important. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, in literal communication from the Greek, this is what actually he's saying. Through faith, we understand that the worlds, the aeons, the ages, the events of time, the happenings of life, the situations you find yourself in. That's the word aeon, age. How you were born, when you marry, all of that. He says, we understand that the worlds were framed. Now, the word framed here is not the word create. So I'm saying that in one sense, you know, the text of Septus used framed in regards to creation. But actually, in context, it's not creation. Because creation, Ephesians 2.10, is the word tizo. K-T-I-Z-O. Tizo. Tizo. K-T-I-Z-O. Tizo. All right? Or Colossians 1.16. The Bible says all things were created by him and for him. That word created is the word tizo. But here, in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 3, he says frame. The word frame is kata tizo. So kata tizo is different from tizo. Together. Tizo is to create. But kata tizo is to repair. So he's saying that through faith we understand that the ages, the events, the happening stances of life, the events of your existence, the situations of your livelihood were repaired to God's original purpose by the rhema of God. The word is not logos here, it's rhema. Now if you've checked through scripture well, you will notice that rhema is never God speaking to you. When God speaks to you, it's not Rima. <laughs> Don't be deceived about that. The, when, when the Bible uses word for Rima, it's not God speaking to you. It's actually man making a declaration. Or man speaking a word that he has received from God. That's Rima. Because listen to what it says. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Rima of God. What did he hear to get Rima? What God said is what he heard. Then when he heard it, he made a speaking that made him hear it. That's what we call rhema. So anytime you speak a word from God, God gives you vision. God gives you prophecy. God gives you understanding. God opens the scripture to you and you make a declaration. That's what we call rhema. So what that means is that <laughs> Are we, are we together? Yeah. He's trying to bring our minds to something very interesting. That the God of this world, go and listen to that message again, enforcing prophetic decrees, you get this better. The God of this world, which is Lucifer, has his own age, his own events, how your life should go, how you were born, how you should live, when you should marry, when you should have kids. Satan has his plan. And the plan is that you shouldn't marry, <laughs> you shouldn't have kids, nothing should work, that's Satan's plan. So the God of this world has brought his own plan into your life. Are we together? Yeah. And that action, Bible says, we received information from God. And that information stirred up the speaking. And the speaking, which is now rhema. Because the Bible says, if you check it, the spoken word of God. Now, the sword of the spirit, which is the spoken word of God. And we understood how that works. And taking the helmet of salvation through prayer, as you engage in prayer, all of a sudden, scriptures are coming to you. Do you know the scriptures don't come to you according to how much you have learned it? Yeah. Yeah. So that means Rema is not what God is saying. It is what you can capture. So when he says, you are framing the world. You are framing your life events. When you should marry. That 2024 is your year. But Satan has planned that middle of the year. Huh? 
you should not see happiness. By June, every desire you had in January should die. So that you are just roller coastering through the year. Like, whatever should happen, should happen. You are just, whatever will happen, should happen. I mean, after all, the year has ended. The guy has broken my heart. Because generally we're dating. But by June, there's a breakup. So you're like, ah, the wedding didn't happen. No, no. You didn't, you didn't have rape. If you had rape from the Lord, this is how you speak. He gives you a vision. And when he gives you a vision, he stirs up a scripture in your heart. And you start speaking it. And Bible says, this is what the, the rest did. Verse 4. Abel offered because of that rima. Five. Enoch walked with God because of the rima that fell in his heart. So everything the man will do because of it is a product of the rima he uttered. So I can change my life if I'm only ready to utter the revelations for the thing to turn around. So I don't care what the doctors have said. There's one thing the doctors tell you what they will tell you. It's another thing using your words to turn things around. You have kidney issues. Yeah. Doc, you know, I, I did the diagnosis and I spoke to uh, Doc White, ACP. And he was telling me that apparently what I was talking to you about at camp, it had pneuma, pneu pneumonia. It was a pneumonia something. So you knew it. Yeah, is that, is that, it looks like I had pneumonia. But his problem was that how can I have pneumonia and be preaching? He said, Daddy, I don't understand. If you have pneumonia, you should be having fever. You should be lying in bed. You shouldn't be able to bath. I don't understand how this thing looks like you are. He said, it's like you're even recovering from the pneumonia. Kai, listen. Look, hey, hey, hey. I don't care what the doctors have told you. I don't get your liver. What? <laughs> Stand in your room and say in the name of Jesus, the glory of God is in my body. Don't joke. If you know what we fight, if you know what we fight, ah! it's called it's called framing your repairing the life. Repair it. You can repair your eyes. Sit in your bed and say in the name of Jesus. I take this anointing or I anoint it. In the, the next day you come. You know, when you do it, then one day you go like, Lord, I've done it for three days. Why is it not happening? Then the Lord will whisper to you. You are considering it. I said, Lord, what do you mean? It's every day you are touching your eyes. You think it's yet to go. Talk to it like it's gone. So you go like, Lord, thank you. I can see well. That's it. Do you know how you repair your eyes many times before you even need the doctor's help? I just told you, somebody... It's actually you, Betinjo. He said his son, Sia One, had Down syndrome at birth. And he used 90 days fasting to reverse it. When Isaac Oedipo, I, I don't know if it's Isaac Oedipo or David Oedipo Jr., one of them, Pastor, Pastor Isaac Oedipo, David Oedipo Jr., he said, when they were born, Bishop Oedipo said, the doctor said he has jaundice. He said, can't you see his eyes is yellow? He said, my sons don't have jaundice. <laughs> they didn't give him injection. They didn't put him inside. He took the boy home. Look, look. If you follow this life, there are too many stories for you to hear. There's a verdict about your situation that is waiting to come to you. But by faith, repair the sentence of your life. Go and sit in your bed and say from today, any guy who tells me they love me, in accordance to the will of God, my marriage is not failing. But you are sitting in your bed, and instead of you to use the anointing, you are rather assisting Satan to say, I don't think I'll marry. I don't think marriage is for me. And you have the audacity to also vocalize it. Ladies, don't deceive yourself. Prophet, I don't really pray about my marriage. That's the problem. That's the problem. The day it dawns on you, you need a man. I don't say you, listen. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you want a man. You need Go and speak to any woman who said, I don't need a man. When they pass 50, you will hear their story. That it was the foolishness of youthfulness. It's the same way a man too needs a woman. Don't deceive yourself. What are you talking about? What's it? Don't deceive yourself. It is, and you see, a Satan is massaging you to make negative confessions. 
The day it dawns on you, you realize that, what have I been doing with my mouth? Your mouth was designed not to eat. It was first designed to create your reality. Do you know, go to Hebrews, Mark chapter 11, the verse number 22. Mark 11, 22. Mark 11, 22. See what Mark 11, 22 said. Mark 11, 22 said. Let's read together. one to go. Have faith in God. Next verse. For verily I say unto you. Woo, my God. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. Now, when we do interpretation, I explain this to you. Some people think this is allegorical. This is literal. This is not allegorical. He's saying the kind of faith God has given you, eh, it can move mountains, literally. But the problem about this is that faith does not come to you or faith is not available until it is needed. If you remember when I taught you on the whole armor of God, I told you that the shield of faith is put in the water and he says take not put take take means you can put it down and you can take it that means faith is not always going to be around faith is around when there is a need that means that jesus was told by herod if you are the son of god turn this wooden bow to gold and jesus laughed so one day in a Muslim country, a missionary was caught and they said, we will only release you if you are able to fulfill this scripture. In Hebrews and Mark eleven twenty three, He said what? He said, didn't your Bible say that if you have faith, move the mountain? And the man stood there and said, Lord, they have challenged you. And I have faith. Move the mountain. There was an earthquake. And the mountain started shifting. Why? It was needed. Your problem is that you are using faith for the things you want. If I was in the world, I would drop the mic and walk away. <laughs> it was needed. <laughs> it's not in what you want. <laughs> it is in what is needed. Can I tell you something? That means you go to the hospital. The doctor said there is a problem with your womb. But the word of God said, none shall cast their young. And every woman that is in Zion will not suffer barrenness. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, can I tell you this? Do you know why, when it is needed? The moment you get bad news, faith has come alive. That means every bad news is an opportunity to use faith. It's a, that is when it is needed. That's when, have you noticed that you can be lying in bed? Everything is working. Your job is working. You are getting your salary. Do you use faith? <laughs> use cash. <laughs> because it's working. But when you need, for instance, you can afford a $10,000 um, watch, $10,000 car, $10,000 suit, whatever it is. But when it gets to a point where the thing is $1 million, you, say, no, you don't have that capacity. So now there is a need. And faith is the answer to that need. So faith comes alive when it is needed. Faith comes alive when everything you are believing for is beyond your natural capacity. Faith is available. So the next time you go to the hospital, they tell you something weird. God was saying that this one, it answers to faith. This one answers to faith. It's impossible for you to possess the land of the giants, but by faith, anything is possible. Listen, listen, that means that when you get a bad report, don't think about the report. Philippians 4, 6 says that do not be anxious for anything, but with prayer and thanksgiving, supplication and prayer, thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. That means when you take it out, Keros. <laughs> you just love, my God. My God. My God is awesome. He can move the mountains. In the valley. Hide me yeah. from the rain. My God is awesome. My God, God is awesome. He heals me when I'm, heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I Listen, 
person. I don't know if you know our God. There's a lady here that said we're praying at dawn and the mother has suffered a stroke of some sort and I think one of the dawn times I think in December November so as we're praying the word of the Lord came and said lady your mother is rising out of that stroke and she said she believed it with all her heart now this is the part I want to show you this is the part of, this, I have so much to show you but this is the part I want to show you your problem with understanding the word that allows Satan to steal it is because sit down, sit down, let me show you this this is important, and then we begin to pray <sighs> my God your problem with understanding the word is this the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 the verse number 14 do all things without memories or disputes now disputings are internal, and uh, memories are internal sorry, disputings or complainings are external Okay, so you can remember and nobody sees. It's inside you. That the tree called a me me is inside you. It's inside, you. it's inside you. So memories are internal, disputings are external. But the Bible says that, verse 15, that what? Ye may be blameless, harmless, sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Verse, verse 16 says, holding forth the word is epeko. The word is epeko. Epeko. Epeko is not lambano. Epeko is not decomai. Epeko is a different word that says that you are holding forth. You are grasping. And in the grasp, you are making sure that it is your consistent approach to any matter. So he's saying that the way you can do this so that you don't murmur, you don't dispute, become blameless, in this crooked and perverse generation is to grasp the word of God and make it the standard by which you make your choices. So you can be in church if you don't epeco, you heard, you learned, but you are not holding it to use it. What that means is that you can remember this service if it truly answered a question in your heart. And if it truly answered the question in your heart, you will draw your action points. Now I'm going to say this. From this year, every preaching you hear, write two things you will do out of the message you heard. For instance, number one, you can write that from today, I talk more the word of God than complain. You write it. From today, I change them, my confession. From today, I have confession minutes. 15 minutes every morning before I go to work. 15 minutes every night before I sleep. I will make positive confessions about my life. It is an action point. If you do this action point, at the end of December 2024, you will have 108 action points. And it's enough to change your life. Your problem is that you're just making notes without action. But every message is giving you action points that if you make action notes, you will change your life. Change your life. How do you hold forth the word of life? If Satan comes to steal it, he says the reason he steals it is because I don't understand. And the reason I don't understand is because I have become a certain type of soil that is just hearing for fun. Matthew, in fact, Luke said it, that these people, when they hear the word, they are excited. But they didn't understand what they heard. They just, oh wow, that's a deep word. Oh, powerful, this guy is very sharp. Hmm? That's it, it ends there. Satan comes to steal the word. Now, how do I make sure that this thing is not lost? Firstly, the spirit of meditation. And I'm going to summarize this message in just five minutes. Meditation has three components. Number one, looking. Number two, thinking. Number three, speaking. Listen to what I'm saying. 
Meditation has three components. If you want to know you have properly meditated, it must start with looking, it must end with speaking. If your meditation does not end with speaking, you just did an exercise of your brain. You are not holding, you are not going to hold, you are not activating a peco. You are not, now looking is important because James said, he said that, James 1, 22 to 25, he says, when you look into the perfect law of liberty, you don't forget what you saw. That means that if you don't write, what to look, look at? If you don't make notes, what are you looking at? That's why we make notes. So you can look. So that you can look. There will be something to look at. Whilst you are in the bus, whilst you are in the office, there are days, I, if you take my, my tablet for instance, you see some of my notebooks from 2010, notebooks from 28, and I've, because it's so dusty and old, I have to take pictures of it, and it's on my tablet. So I'll be reading the note on the picture. So you see me in the bus, but I'm reading a book for my diary. You can carry your diary to the office, beautiful, but take pictures of it whilst you're going to the office. Read it in a car. Read it in a car. You took pictures of your passport? You took pictures of your Ghana card? Why are you there taking pictures of the message you wrote? Take pictures. Hallelujah. Take pictures. So that you can consistently look. You are waiting in the lobby. You, I mean, recently I saw some pictures. The person, you know, there's this bench in the bank, blue. With silver, he said, that, he said, in a company, you see that bench, it means you are going to wait for a long time. <laughs> when you see such a bench, no, this not you, today you wait. That bench is blue with silver head. It's a waiting bench. <laughs> they will close before you see anybody. You go and sit on that waiting bench, and you are just looking in the sky. You are on Instagram. Look at it. You are not looking. You are not looking. Meditation involves looking. That means that anything you keep looking at is what you are actually thinking about. That's the truth. Look at it. Take a picture of it like this thing professor said. I've never heard this. Hey, this verse he used. I've never seen it before in the Bible. Then you go and check the verse. Check it in different versions. You're like, ah, this thing has spoken to me. That's how you do it. Look. It starts with looking. I've said the Lord before me. Look. 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 I told you the last time, anytime you fly, your brain chemistry is at the best absorption level. Something happens at altitude. Something happens to your brain. You can learn more. <laughs> Somebody's also looking at me. May the Lord help you to fly. <laughs> Somebody's asking, so how about us who have not flown before? May the Lord give you grace to fly. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. People finish books in the plane. It's not the eight hours old. You serve the same eight hours in the house. Don't you have the same eight hours in the house? But you will just be wobbling your leg, <laughs> drink tea, watch TV. Because you can't be focused on the earth like that. In the sky, you are above principalities and powers. <laughs> in, the, in the sky, you are, you are in... in uh, that's what Archbishop said. He said, when I'm in the sky, I think well. Because I'm above my enemy's head. <laughs> There's something about the clouds. It, it, it activates a certain... You can finish a whole book in the plane. I'm telling you. A whole book. May the Lord also give you grace to fly. Somebody will say, ah, that's why I've not finished book in my life. <laughs> Because I've not yet flown. One day, when I fly, I'll finish the books. The Lord have mercy on you. Look. As you look, as you look, it will generate thinking. Because meditation is contemplating on what you have seen. And that's where, in that meditation, you activate the power of imagination. Because imagination means imaging yourself into something. If you are imagining and you see, oh, David was running towards Goliath, that's beautiful. But you don't see yourself running towards your problems in life. You have not yet imagined. The goal of imagination is to image yourself in the thing you are looking at. How come you always image yourself in bad situations? You are driving, imagine I get caught. <laughs> imagine I break up. Hey, imagine I don't, I don't, I don't marry. Hey, we're imagining all kinds of things. So when you see people watching movies, they are sad. It's imagination. They're imagining that, hey, it's me. Or could have been me, yeah. Why don't you imagine yourself in the right place? One day, sit down and say, imagine I've received one million dollars. Oh, my God. You, you'll be shocked. All of a sudden, in your room, you stand straight and start walking. <laughs> it will change the way you walk. Yeah. Do you know how you imagine changes you're walking? It's a very funny body chemistry. I can know what you are thinking by how you're walking. Some people, when you see them walking from a distance, 
That, this is how they work. This is the hustler's posture. Yeah. They hold the bag. They are holding shoes, case. What is how they're working? <laughs> then they'll stop small. <laughs> then you see one handkerchief like that. This is Then this what shows you that the guy is hustling. Do send your hands down this gather. That's not how rich people work. But when you see somebody who has confessed breakthrough, they hold their bag in the morning. They're like kabaraba sundobo. When you see them, you're like ah, this guy is happy. He owns the world. His father is a king. He is the son of a king. When he's working, there's confidence. It's how you are thinking. It's how you are thinking. Isn't it amazing of all things they do at interviews? They measure body language. And body language cannot be mimicked beyond what you are thinking. When you are nervous, you can never hide it to show. When you are, that's why they say you are confident. Confidence is not a face. It's a thinking. Sometimes you are unconsciously confident because you didn't care. <laughs> Have you done another company you didn't want them to choose? They chose you. Yeah. But when you go there, here, cry, I don't want to come. He says that. <laughs> so how much will you offer me? Well, I want 3,000. Oh, we are so sorry. We can give you 1,005. Well, that's all I can do. You see, the place you don't want, you are very insistent. Yeah. But the place you want... Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has been there. How much do you want? Um, 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 something around 5,000. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> 3,000 will not be bad. <laughs> you are not serious. Listen. Imagine yourself in that scripture. Imagine yourself in the days of Jesus. When Jesus multiplied bread. Imagine your day, yourself in the day where fish were producing taxes. Imagine yourself in the day where boats were appearing on land. Imagine yourself in the day where fishes came to a man who had been struggling all night long. Imagine, just keep imagining it because the Bible said he is able to do exceedingly above all that you can ask or even think or imagine. Your thinking is a prayer topic. Watch what you are thinking. Watch what you are thinking. It is part of the process of manifestation. Oh my God, Jesus prayed in John chapter 11 and said, Lord, I thank you. You hear me every time I pray. That means the way he was praying, he was not coming for what if. He was sure God has heard him. That's why he thanked God before he ever said Lazarus come out. He was sure. He was sure. No wonder he screamed and said, why do the people imagine a vain thing? Don't let your mind become vain. It was not meant, listen, anytime you worry, oh my God, I'm going to touch on that. In, Dr. John mentioned it, but I'm going to mention to you. Anytime you worry, anytime you're anxious, it is the vanity of your mind. Your mind was not designed to be anxious. This is how God created your mind. Anytime Pastor always has a thought, that God, I want to change my car. That thought is conversation God wants to be invited into. So actually, when you have nothing to say to God, God gives you thoughts to talk to him. It only leads to anxiety when you put God outside your thinking. The Bible says you did not retain God in your thinking. So he gives you over. So you are there and say, ah, why is my body acting funny? Lord, why am I feeling what I'm feeling? And the Lord said, yes, I told you. You, you were supposed to take communion two weeks ago. You stopped taking communion. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, can I start again? Okay, wait, wait, take it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> You see, the Christian race is very simple. If you don't see the simplicity, then somebody comes to take advantage of you. But it's that simple. Check every thought you did not pass it through God. It ended you in depression. You had no business thinking it. Your head is too small for that. He said, take no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take care of itself. And that morrow is a person. He said, the morrow shall take care of himself. He called moral a him. He didn't say itself. He said himself. 
Matthew 6, right? Yeah. Is it take no thought of the morrow? Find it, find it. My God. Things of this, I said, sufficient of the day, aha. Uh -huh. Take thought for the things of itself. So, no, where, where's the um, ASV? Find ASV for me. Glory to God. Do you have Amplified Classic? And Passion Translation. Some translation actually use him, not its. You use him, not its. So what he was talking about was that the tomorrow has, can handle the day. Yeah. Because if he uses it, an inanimate thing cannot handle. Right. It, it's, inanimate things cannot handle it. So it's a person. Your tomorrow is a person. Your tomorrow is a person. Your tomorrow is a person. Praise God. Are you here with me? Tomorrow is a person. And he said, leave him to handle it. Leave him to handle it. Pray, Korashana. Are you here with me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. And the last thing is speaking. So you look, you think, and you speak. You look, keep looking. Look into the perfect, look at it. Have captures of it. Have it. Have it. Some people capture my status. It's powerful. And you meditate, you're like, hey, this thing, you look at it again, look at it again, look at it again. I told you what statuses are for. It's to remind you of something. And it must be consistent with your feeding. Praise God. Your status is not for jesting. Not for foolery, no. If it's a joke, it must amplify what you are learning. That's why it's there. Amen. Amen. Are we together? Yeah. But most importantly, speak. Speaking is the end of the reality of the things you have thought about. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. The mouth will speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. That means that if it has entered your system, you will speak. Can I give you an example? Everyone who is here will say, say after me, Lord, I'm blessed. Lord, I'm blessed. I, walk in abundance. I walk in abundance. Do you know this speaking is not what I'm talking about? This speaking is from your head. It's not from your heart. Because I asked you, you responded to a request. That's why I tell you, confessing in church is not equal to the what we call confession. No, that's not it. I'm rich. That one does, it's not, doesn't count. It's actually a seed for you to go and meditate in your heart. So what does it mean after you say, I'm rich? Keep saying it till you get your car. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. Oh, why am I rich? Hey, but I don't have anything. I'm rich. Yeah, what's happening? You are breaking the analysis of your mind. You said it in church, but it has not yet entered your heart. Because you've not yet thought about it. Number two, you might even say it in church, I'm rich, I'm, I'm breaking forth, and you're happy here. But if you don't keep the image to look at it again, you will leave and forget. And you will start thinking of what you are seeing outside. So you leave church, the place is so powerful, you enter your room, no light, no food, it's cold, you are hungry. So it's as if you left one reality to another reality. So what you are looking at will start making you think poverty. So you are in a place of prosperity, but every time you go home, it looks poverty. So you cannot consistently think of wealth. That's why the first indication of wealth is cleanliness. Clean your room. You will start thinking money. Sometimes a clean place looks rich. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Just clean the place. You see, ah, this thing can be nice. Yeah. It starts from that. Are you understanding? Are you here with me? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to what I'm saying very well. Start speaking it in your room. How do you do it? You start. I'm rich. <sighs> I'm rich. I'm rich. Then they'll send you a text. Ping, 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 ping. ECG. Point fifty passwords soon to cut. Then the machine will be beeping, ping, 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 ping outside. And you are, you are saying, I'm rich. And you are saying, I'm rich towards the ECG and still beeping, pee, 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 pee. I'm rich. Then you pack, 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 pack. You see that thing I want to do to borrow credit? Pack, 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 pack. They said, deny, deny, deny. Because you have borrowed for four months now. So they can't accept you. So as it tells you, deny three times. If you don't take care, first you do this, hmm, I'm poor. <laughs> But you don't look at what you are looking at. Even though it tells you denied, I'm rich. I'm rich. 
Um, listen, talk your way into prosperity. Talk your way into abundance. Talk your way into healing. Talk your way into glory. Talk your way. Ay, 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 ay. Listen, this is how you talk. If you are a single lady here, speak like this in the name of Jesus. I will not get to the altar and say I do to the wrong man. It's your prayer. That means that anything leading to I do, if it's not God's will, it will end. The person you say I do to is God's will. That's not, that's what, it's a simple prayer. It's very, it's effective. It's effective. You don't stop talking. Man, do read Kabbalah. Somebody break your heart. They, hello, hi. They chat to you, chat to you, chat to you. After two weeks, they just drop the line. They drop the mic. You're not hearing from them. They are ghosting you. And you're like, oh my God, what's going on? Why is he not checking up? Why has he left me? He's ghosted me because he's cast by the ghost. All kinds of things. After all of that, what do you say? I'm the righteousness of God. A better is coming. I'm marrying glory. Hey, I'm marrying glory. You don't carry yourself to a wedding. And when they say you may kiss the bride, eh, hmm. eh, that's how some of you do. At the wedding, you say you are happy two minutes. Then you start, you say the person is looking at the couple and they have traveled back to Asamanke. Hey, hallelujah. Couple, couple. Then we will see them. Hmm. Then they'll start thinking, go back to their childhood. And as, hey, why? A better is coming. Oh my God. Barako. Listen. When the clouds are full of rain, they will, um, ask yourself a simple question. How much clouds have you created? Ask yourself. Weeping is not clouds. <laughs> Complaining is not clouds. Negative words are not clouds. What? You are rather creating cloud, not cloud. Stop talking rubbish. Speak life. Speak the word. What you want to see, let your words be consistent to it. God is doing his work in my life. I cannot fail. I carry the energy of God. The spirit of Christ is upon me. That's how you talk. I cannot fail. And sometimes it gets so wild. And that's how you do the warfare of confession. You lock yourself up in a room. Okay, why? You are making sure that the tongues is purifying your tongue. That's what we do. The Bible says, we speak with an unknown tongue. We edify ourselves. Therefore, I will speak with my spirit and the understanding also. Definite article, First Corinthians chapter 14. The understand, not a understanding, not my, the, 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 the. Do you have it there? First Corinthians 11. Ha, ha, ha. He said the, not my. So usually people read it this way. I will speak with my, I will speak with the spirit and with my understanding. My understanding means that, Kero, Karaba, Shandaraba, Father, thank you. No, that's my understanding. But the moment he says the understanding, it means that the understanding is the explanation of what you said in the spirit. So anytime you do karakatos kapalaba, no, hey, are we not all English students? He says, I, no, don't we always say it? I will sing with the spirit, because sometimes we say my spirit, and then we change this to my understanding. So we think it's speaking a language you understand. No. That means when I say, Gan Nero Basande me, Urande me, Asindopi, then I say, Oh my Lord, you are the Lord, oh reign forever, you are the King. As soon as I do that, that's the understanding of the tongues I sound. That's the understanding. So anytime you speak in tongues and English follows, that's the understanding. That's the understanding. So sometimes, Kato Karabaka, Rakota Salam, all of a sudden, I'm making it, I'm making it. All the things you said in tongues is in that streets, I'm making it, I'm making it. That's the understanding. You never stop talking. Oh my God, this year. <laughs> this year, what Pastor Isaiah said last week? Some of you use anointing oil for your car. Oh, you use communion for your food. <laughs> you, I pray you get it. I pray you get it. Your generator will see communion. You will pour it on it. And yeah. I was in the country I traveled to, and a, a gentleman came and said, Prophet, I have a testimony. He said, I was in the studio working, and my laptop was misbehaving. He said, immediately, and he's been joining our prayer. So he said, immediately, I went to the room, took the special anointing oil, and I came to anoint the, top, the back of the laptop. And the studio people were wondering, what are you doing? He said, I just attached the back. And when I went to put the oil, I came back. I put on the laptop, it worked. And the guy said, hey, how, what did you do? He just laughed. He came to anoint computer in a studio. 
where they were recording and it began to work. What are you talking about? Inanimate things respond to anointing. Many, many years ago, I was wearing a shoe. It was, my, it was not my size. The sh- <laughs> May the Lord bless you. <laughs> and many years ago, I was wearing a shoe and the shoe was not my size, sir. It was not my size. I think we shared the story at. Yeah. And I said, Father, in the name of Jesus. This is 2010. Or, no, I think 12 or 11. And I said, Father, in the name of I reduced my leg. Also, the shoe was a size 10, a size 12. I wore it perfectly without pain. Yeah, it was a need. Good. Now that God has given me shoes, it will not change. <laughs> <laughs> what God will tell me that your leg will not reduce you are not Cinderella <laughs> give it out, give the shoe out you like that so when I said that someone said Aha, those my shoes for two years I've been struggling to wear dash it, dash it, dash it this was a need because I'd gone somewhere and that's the only shoe I had so that's the only way to wear it, I say in the name I reduce my leg size I reduce my leg size I reduce my leg size and pa, my leg went into it and I, went, I was shocked. I said, I said, God, you do. He said, yeah, I do everything. If you only believe and it's a need, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. What am I trying to tell you today? Stop using your mouth for gossip. And for eating. And after eating, you put toothpaste. <laughs> ah, today the beans was nice. You are, you are glorifying beans. <laughs> and your destiny is, is lying there. <laughs> you are celebrating food. With, with your thanksgiving is towards food and not your life. Magadoria <laughs> Balaba. Some people, the only time they sing praises is when they eat. Some have food they cannot eat. That's the hymn you are singing. You don't sing hymns till you eat. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, all of you are suspects. You never give thanksgiving till you eat. <laughs> When you eat one fufu, hey! A nyame shrao. After the fufu, a nyame shrao. Hey! Oh, then you start praying. Father, God bless the farmer. <laughs> you have never spoken anything about your destiny. It's fufu you are praising. And the cassava farmer. <laughs> Listen, this year must be different. This year must be different. This year you must deliberately use your mouth. When you get home tonight, go and list everything there is a need and tell the Lord, my faith comes alive. This area, my faith comes alive. I, a car must happen. Oh yes, a car must happen. Speak it. Do you know I got my first car? I kept speaking it. I spoke it for three years. 2010, I have a new car. It didn't come. 2011, um, I have a new car. It didn't come. I, I said, God, it didn't come. He said, keep talking. I said, Lord, why? He said, all your life, you've confessed negative. You've spoken for 30 years. Oh, will I ever buy a car? Um, I need a government loan. All kinds of negative things. And you want to use one 12 months to undo what you have used 30 years to say. It doesn't work like that. But the Lord will require consistency. I'm not saying you will take the name same 30 years, but be consistent. If it didn't happen this year, that's not means it's not happening. It's getting closer. Remember what we said, wavelength. It's coming as a wave. But when you tend to look at it, it's as if it's still far. But it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. I'm, I'm, I'm in the name of Jesus. But most importantly, this is the year of years. I said, this is the year of years. Whatever you are believing God to happen this year. In fact, the vision I had was that all your blessings, they are already at the door. They are already they are, they are staring you. But you must use your mouth. David finished Goliath with his mouth. There is nothing David did. He didn't declare first. Go and read it. He said, I will kill you today. And I came with five stones for your brothers too. And after that, I will cut off you. And David had no sword. But he told Goliath, I will cut off your head. And before Goliath said, he said, am I a dog that you come before me with sticks? And David sentenced him. It was so strong that Goliath was afraid. He took cursed David by his gods. And everything started changing. You cannot win what you've not declared about. Today, 
I provoke you to this activation. And in this few 10 minutes, we are coming to pray. I want you to activate. Some of you are sleeping warriors. Yeah. You have warriors that have gone to sleep. What do I mean by that? It's not like fiscal sleep. Oh. Some of you have been worn out. You've been worried by many disappointments. So you have the sword of mighty men. When will they see your armor in the spirit? You are a giant. But you are done fighting. You are at a place where you are like, what should happen should happen. I don't care again. But the Lord says, I'm going to rouse up mighty warriors again. Warriors must lift up their swords and put on their shoulder and stand and say, ah, sleeping warriors have been roused up again and they stand on their posts. They are parambulating the entrance of their family gates and they are decreeing, no one goes out. No one comes in until I say so. Lift your voice and begin to activate. Some of you have anointing visions, dreams, revelations healings mantles, anointings but you have gone to sleep because you prophesied twice and you didn't see it come to pass so because of that you have given up on prophecy some of you have healing anointings you prayed for some people and they still died you prayed for some people and they didn't come to their full healing and it felt like you were embarrassed some of you have anointings where God gave you a clear word and you told somebody and acted on it and it felt as if you were deceived by God you stood like Jonah and said I have been deceived by you but you are saying to God today by my mouth I activate mantles somebody open your mouth and begin to declare Satan Anoint my eyes with eyes salvo God. Let the fire of God come upon me again. Somebody, you were a man of miracles and testimony, but something has grounded you. Today you want to tell God. I believe again. I believe again. I believe again. I believe again. By faith, you subdued mountains. By faith, you shut up the mouth of lions. By faith, you were able to enter your inheritance. But you had one or two disappointments. And you put down your sword. And you have shut up your mouth. But today you are sent to God. By the institution of the Holy Ghost. By the power of cloven tongues. My tongue is purified. Once upon a time, you used to declare, when I pray, God answers. I am God's baby girl. I am God's child. And when I pray, he answers. After three, four occasions, you began to doubt that reality. But I came to call somebody to activation. 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 The same God. 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 I 
see well. I see clear. I see well. I see clear. I see well. I see clear. I see well. I see clear. The power that works. Lift your hands to Jesus. I saw what Isaiah chapter 6, the verse number 7 says. He said, And I saw a seraph that flew and came to the altar and took a tongue and took coal of fire and placed it upon my tongue. And I had God tell me, I'm about to purify tongues. What that means is that God is about to touch your mouth. <laughs> and this consecration is not going to permit you to speak evil again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your tongue is going to be loosed. <laughs> you will never prophesy anything narrow and contradictory. It's not just causing your tongue to be loose. Your tongue could be quick fire when it comes to anything that requires a declaration. The Holy Ghost will quicken your mouth <laughs> and you will speak. You will not forget. 
to make a declaration about matters. Somebody will tell you you are failing. Somebody will tell you you can't make it. And immediately the Holy Ghost will kick you to retort it. And say, I condemn that statement. I don't agree to that statement. You will not get home and say, why did I allow this person to talk to me like that? You will correct them by the power of the Holy Ghost on the spot. When they say, poor you to you, you say, I'm never poor. I'm rich in Christ Jesus. You will correct it. There's a flame of God touching your tongue. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Lift your hands to him. Holy, holy. Lift your hands to him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody is about to have their eyes open again. Because I heard God tell me, you are not understanding your dreams again. Your dreams are not making any signal. They are not communicating. Literally, your, your signals are jammed. Yeah. Your, your signals are jammed. And the Lord said, today's activation. If you will believe in your heart, if you believe in your heart, you will come to have direct signals. Direct. And listen, the power of God that's going to hit you it's like a surgical process. God's just going to remove any device of the devil that has corrupted your signal receiving instrument, your spirit, your heart. Yes, Holy Ghost, activations. Let the dreamers, those that see visions, oh yes, let it come, let it come, let it come, let it come, purify fire, fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. Oh, just help me. Help me. All right. Help me. Help me. Help me right now. <laughs> Woo! You have it. You have it. It never left. It's just been covered. <laughs> oh, my dear. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Your signals will not be jammed. There are four of you. You are, your dreams are prophecy. But lately, lately, you don't get what is going on. I came as the angel with the call of fire. Let ice be touched with fire. <laughs> yes, Lord. There's a lady here, in fact, and a gentleman also. They've stopped writing their dreams. They've stopped writing. Because they are feeling like what they are writing, they don't even they are not seeing it come to pass. Please catch, catch, catch them, catch them, catch them. As a lady and a gentleman, God said, You are going back to writing. You are going back to writing. You are going back. You are going back to writing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, Lord. Woo! Woo! Hi. Let it go higher. <laughs> Activations. <laughs> the gift of laughter. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Joy unspeakable. Oh. See, there's an anointing that, that falls on people and in a certain experience of the spirit, laughter takes over their lives. And one of them actually is a gentleman and you are a minister of God and you've lost your laughter. You, you know, like there's a dimension you begin to feel this happiness in your spirit. In fact, I'm seeing two men of God now. People that minister to other people and oh, take that laughter again. Oh, just come to the front. Take that laughter again. Because I see that you are, you are stifling the anointing. <laughs> Woo! Take it. Take it. Take it. Oh. Laughter. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> ah, laughter. It's a tongue, you know. It's a tongue. When it comes on, you begin to laugh. Sometimes you think you are pretending, but it's, it's the Holy Ghost. It's the actually it's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My God. God said that laughter that is coming back to you is Isaac. You are going to handle your promise in 12 months. Jesus. Now it's going to be like a whirlwind people. About 10 of you are catching that laughter anointing and say the spirit of God the devil planted worry, anxiety and fear but he is giving you laughter <laughs> Woo! glory 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 yes yes now take it go to the back go to the back go to the back there are three of them there Laughter is coming back to them. Laughter is coming back to them. True laughter from heaven. True laughter from heaven. Madego Rabasendole. Kelemesiro Sabariata. Sirebre don Sendrebe Sand. Yes, 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 yes. My God. My God. My God. My God. There are 20 of you here. 20. I saw a staff. And written on it is the med... I, I saw it written on it. Medicine rule. The ruler of medicine. And I asked God, what is this? It says, there are 20 of them here. Five of them actually are not well in their bodies. And I'm releasing healing, but I'm making them healers. 20. Ushers, please help me. All right? Help me. Help me. Two of you have the anointing to raise the dead. 20 of you. I'm going to count three. And the Holy Ghost, according to your faith, is activating the healing grace again. He's taking away the fear of failure. Oh my God. 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 One, <laughs> two, three. Now let the healers begin to appear. Everywhere. From the back to the front. Any sickness, any disease, any predicament you yourself are dealing with. Let the healing power of God touch you. Let it touch you. I curse that pain in your back. I curse that kidney problem. I break the heart issue. <clears throat> come on, come on, come on. Some of you must go and lay hands on your parents. You must. You must. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. No more failure from today. See? No more failure. <laughs> Glory. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> God has given you wings, 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 wings. You will feel heat in your palm. You will feel heat in your palm. You will feel heat in your palm. Healing anointing. Healing anointing. Healing anointing. Healing anointing. I activate it right now. Your experience is not equal to the word of God. We have a more sure word of prophecy. I don't care how many times you've prayed for someone and they didn't get healed. Right now, I activate the healing anointing. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we place the staffs of healing. The staffs of healing. Oh, yes. Ah. Delo mara sendo kivara sanda elo robo seliko ra banzi manato file gira pando robo sekti libre gofa bohale lo shaydali ibe saik mando 
Fala ibre tendo fele gera das. There are two people at the back there. Listen, there are two people at the back. Now that I'm, I'm saying it because it's beyond where the camera is, so it's behind. There are two people at the back there, and I'm seeing. It's like God. God is giving you a chariot. God is giving you a watchtower. God is giving you a sword. God has given you a castle. But I heard God tell me that the devil has played on your mind for a long time. And you have shot, changed your blessing, your destiny, because of fear and because of confusion. But I just heard the Lord tell me, I'm opening the door again for them. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Now ushers, there are two of them. I, I'm seeing, I don't know if both of them are guys or... There's a lady and a guy. I don't know. Please, sometimes when we describe those things, it's what we are seeing based on the perception we have. It can be beyond what we are seeing. It can be two, it can be three, but I'm seeing two. That's what I'm saying. And what is going to characterize what God is about to do is that I see like a spinning. Okay, it's like a whirlwind that is going to fall upon you and you'll begin to spin. And God told me, he says, it's activation into dangerous, the wealth gradient of Solomon. That's what I heard. You are going to walk in places and people will give you things that no human being will want to dash you. I know what I'm talking about. Holy Spirit. Yes. Three people have also added their faith to it, so they become five now. Father, Father, whoever is being fought against, their prosperity and their blessing and their destiny in blessings. There are five of you now. I see it. You will begin to spin. Ushers, bring those people to me, okay? And get me oil. I need to anoint those people. There is a mantle. Get to the back for me. Get to the back for me. I'm seeing two ladies in the jet. Please, everybody, be in the spirit. Leave the ushers to do their work. But everyone else, be in the spirit. There is a mantle. It's like a whirlwind that will carry you into your chariots of manifestation. Yes. Yes. It's on you, my dear. It's on you, my dear. It's on you. You are spinning into authority. You are spinning into favor. That chariot is waiting. I see a chariot. I see a sword. I see a castle. I see it waiting for you. Holy Ghost. Everyone in that category, please bring them to me. Please don't let these people go without me touching them. There's something about to happen to their financial destiny. That's it. Kere koro, kere koro, kere koro. Sindoria, send me. Get me the oil. Get me the oil. Where is it? Get me the oil. Get me the oil. There are two people at the back there. Please don't joke with this. Hey, guess kumbarata san. Yes. Let us sit. take your back. Take her to a seat. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Give me the oil. Give me the oil. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Give me the oils. Two more people. Two more. Two more. Bring it to me. I knew it. It's at the back there. That's why I saw. I saw beyond. Something coming on you. So heavy. Heavy. And I will be. And I will be. And I will shine. Your glory, I will be King of of Judah, I will be. Ooh. 
drop this oil on you. Nothing will prevent you from entering what God has arranged for your life. I will be I will be your sin and I will be Everybody lift your hands to heaven. God is about to touch your tongue in a special way, I'm telling you. This thing I just did in service today, confession. Your anger will be directed towards everything that is contrary to what God promised you. And by that anger, you'll be fueled into the place of prayer. The prayer of authority. You will declare what you want to see. And I tell you the truth, in 24 hours, by this activation, when you say it, <laughs> you're going to see it. 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 Now, let the angel of the Lord drop the coals of fire in your tongue. Now see how your tongue will be loose. Look at that. All over the place. Look at that. New tongues are coming. <laughs> New songs are coming. Look at that. Look at that. Your tongue will burn. Your tongue will burn. Look at that. Look at that. I literally see fire here. And it's on people's mouth. Like the day of Pentecost. It's on people's mouth. It's on people's mouth. It's on people's mouth. It's on people's mouth. On people's mouth. Everything that is not consistent with the word of God. Is breaking forth from your mouth. To scatter. You will not complain again. <laughs> you, 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 you have lost the ability to murmur. You have lost the ability to complain. You have lost the ability to say you don't know what to say. <laughs> I see grace being poured in your lips. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I Thank you, Holy Spirit. Everybody be quiet. I describe this angel and your tongue is loosed. Your tongue is loosed. It will not cleave to your mouth again. In the day of trouble, you will not be like Moses crying to God. You will speak to the mountain. Move. Move. There are four of you are receiving dangerous authority. Dangerous. <laughs> dangerous authority. I don't know. I just saw it. It's like God just came to put rank on some four people's shoulder. Dangerous authority. It's not the level where anything you bless, but it's an authority where when you say it, it will have a different weight from other people. That's what I saw. There are four of you. There are four of you. You feel like somebody is pressing your shoulder. Four. You feel it. Four of you. Please bring me those four people. There are four. There are four. It's like somebody is pressing your shoulder. You can feel like a weight on your shoulder pressing you down. Bring them. Bring them. Put them on the altar. There are four. There are four. It's a prophetic authority. When you say it, even when somebody disagrees, <laughs> you are like Elisha Elijah you will lock the heavens and God will say because this one has locked it it's locked okay, okay, okay so in there, in there. look those, those beyond the camera and the lights I don't know but I see the angels there receive it all at the back overflow you are, you are the back receive it four of you Weight, weight is falling on you. You feel it. It's like something heavy is on top of you. Something heavy. And God said, that's what you feel. Anytime you have to make a declaration against anything. 
that you don't want to see in your life. That's what you feel. Yeah, no, 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 no. Bring them to me. Put them on the altar. Okay, those people put them on the altar. Hey. 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 He teach your hand to wage war. Ah, <laughs> He teaches your hand to wage war. Father. It will be different this year. He teaches your hand to wage war. <laughs> he teaches your hand to wage war. I'm standing by water fountains and waterfalls in this holy country and I see angels flying left right center and they are singing the humming song That is the song of the mountain dwellers. the mountain dwellers We have come to Mount Zion. 
on. Higher, higher. Come up higher. ascending in Zion we come up higher we come up hither we come up higher we come up hither for he was in the spirit on the Lord's day and the Lord said to him come up thither there is always another realm in the heights of God he said to Moses when they were on top of the mountain come into the mountain there is somewhere higher than the mountain top we come up higher higher and higher we come up higher Higher and higher, we come up higher. Higher and higher, we come up higher. Dance the song we sing, higher, higher and higher. We sing in Zion, higher. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you glory. Thank you, precious Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Trust in your finished work, Lord. Because if you have said it, then you do. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not a man to stop doing it now. And if you have said it, you will be able to do it. You have track record of keeping your word you're not allowed to stop doing it now You are mighty, 
God. You are mighty, oh. You are mighty, Jesus. Shebe yile for you alone. Shasho bora. Mighty God. Shebe yile for you alone. Shasho bora. Believe him. Okay. Believe him. He's done. And he meant everything he said. It is finished means it's finished. Understand it. Declare. Look at. Speak it into reality. Hold on fast to every promise of God. Don't say this one, I think I've missed it. You've not missed it. Hold on hot and hard. This one. I'm not letting go till the Lord fulfills his word even to me. Lift your hands to Jesus and bless him. Wave it to the Lord. Wave it to the Lord. Thank you, precious Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. We are closing, okay? God willing, next week, um, we have a special meeting with Pastor Isaiah. And um, the, the, sorry, this Friday, this Friday, this coming Friday, we have a special all night, 9th February, with Pastor Isaiah, with Sumi Sola. Do you have the, the flyer if you can put it up? Sumi Sola, Agbebi, and Pastor Yenka, Agbebi also. I hey, know. Okeleye, that's their new name, Okeleye. And then uh, Pastor Emmett and myself, the, 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 the conference is WAS, W A S, is it? Yeah, worship all night service. Worship is a worship all night service. So obviously, as you see, it's worship and word. It's gonna be mixed like that until yeah. So don't miss it. The visitation, um, intimacy. It's gonna be a powerful time with the Holy Ghost. Make sure you are there if it's possible. Um, Kezia, come. I want us to stretch a hand towards a sister. Um, is, it, is it last year? Of what December? Yeah, she lost the mom. Can we stretch our hands towards here? The funeral is this Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, yes, we have this all night, all right, but after the all night, we will make it to the funeral. Um, it's necessary. It's a mom. It's not a grandmother. It's not an uncle. It's a mother. So please, as many as you can be there, let's all go and support her. Um, the funeral is on the 10th. The details we put on the page is a prom prom. Uh, the details, the, the location we're given by is a prom prom just here. So. Let's, let's, those who are interested, write your name. We'll get a bus here. we just move. Um, yeah. Praise the Lord. Can we stretch out to us here? Let's ask for grace and strength for the family, the peace and the power of God to keep them. May it be the last time such an event will happen in their house this year. Let it be celebration, restoration, breakthrough, glory in the family, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, strengthen them, keep them. We cancel every agenda of Satan to bring division and confusion in the family because of this death. We declare that Lord unity and abundance is their portion. Thank you that we are not hopeless in this life and that of all men you have granted us grace to once again encounter family. Therefore we thank you the Lord. All that concerns this family is perfected. The will of God shall stand. The counsel of the enemy will not hold anymore. In Jesus' mighty name you are protected, strength and honor from God upon you. In Jesus' name God bless you my dear. All right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, can we celebrate my dear Sandra Boache? Yeah. We are finally recorded. He's standing by my side. So, very soon, I'm sure it's going to be coming out. Uh, yeah, you, you'll see me. I was singing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then my dear Emmanuel Smith is also here. Hallelujah. Yes, Get him a microphone. Let him give us some greetings. Uh, he, you are going when tomorrow? Tuesday, yes. yes, 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 yes. Let him give us uh, all the way from London. Uh, very soon I'm coming there. I'm coming. Uh, so, yeah. We have a lot of meetings to have there. So um, I'm going to bless you. And then he's going to just sing a song whilst you know, before we take the benediction. And so we have closed service. So he's going to sing a song, and I bless you after the song. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just be in the spirit of worship. Yeah.
We greet everybody online too. We love you dearly. Keep registering for the schools. All right. My beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands. Ten thousands, yes, you are. Ah, 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 We call your name Yours is the kingdom, say! Come on, come on. One more time we declare, say, yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, mama, nani, me, kope, liyano. One more time. We declare. Come on, we declare that over the nation. Hey! Elohim Adonai. Come on. Elohim Adonai. Elohim Adonai.
February, we have an all girls meeting here. So, on Valentine's Day, listen, listen, listen. Uh -huh. I know some of you ladies, when I say all girls, married, single, dating, all of you. Only girls on Valentine's Day. Uh -huh. Especially those that are nation. Yeah, just show up. Yeah. Myself and Mama D, we have some time with you, so come. So that you are not tempted into ungodly sorrow. <laughs> just come. <laughs> we'll share the word of God and pray. So 14 February, live girls, girls chat. Now, now listen, the best we'll do is, is we'll do radio. So if you don't come, you'll listen on radio. We are not going to telecast it. Uh -huh. So, um, those who are outside Ghana, especially diaspora people, you can connect via diaspora church. They will be part of the church life. But we are not going to do YouTube general message because we are, want to address some things. Yes, 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 yes. And then, God willing, so that's exactly at um, 5.30 on Wednesday, Valentine's Day. We are meeting here only girls. It's only girls meeting. Only girls. Married, single, uh, divorced, whatever. Once we're a girl, show up. Hallelujah. Then God will on Saturday, the 17th, is only boys. Uh -huh. The boys, we also have something to address and help you. We have to understand a lot of things. Uh, as a man, you have to understand a lot of things. How to position yourself, how to talk, how to dress, all of that. You have to come so that <laughs> your life will turn around. Hallelujah. So 14th is for the girls, 17th is for the boys. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. So please mark those days. We'll put the flyer out wherever you are. Make sure you are coming. Uh, this one is, like I said, it's boys, boys. It's girls, girls. 
So you are not coming with any beloved. You are coming alone. <laughs> Some of the things when you are together, you'll be there. When they are saying something, you'll be pinching the guy. Swat it, swat it, swat it. Swat it. Are you hearing what they are saying? No, no, no. Come alone so we can address you. The ladies to come alone so we can address you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, we thank you for everybody here. Thank you, the Lord. You have activated the mouth to speak. That this week, Lord, we will speak our testimonies. That we will not wait for miracles to happen. No. You have given us the weapon by which we create and facilitate the manifestation of our miracles. So this week, we speak them into being. We declare them showing forth. By our mouth, we change grades. By our mouth, we change medical reports. By our mouth, we change bank statements. By our mouth, we change contract details. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, this year, we will use our mouth well. And we'll be able to break forth in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Let your name be exalted even now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now, get ready for a special broadcast. Uh, we, are, we are going to be recording it and bringing it live your way. Two more powerful messages on spiritual warfare and next. Yes, spiritual welfare are next. And then number two, climate change. I preached that message about 15 years ago. I'm going to preach it again. Climate change. You don't want to miss those broadcasts for anything. So you will see them pop up on podcasts, all those things. Tune in, you'll get it. You'll be blessed. Hallelujah. Share the grace with somebody. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I've realized the mystery of iniquity.